Today, I have 21 ideas for you to try in 2022. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I have chosen three signs to start with, and these came from Dollar Tree. You can choose whichever signs and colors and designs that you would like. The first one is a navy metal sign that has thanks on the tailgate. And this one is kind of an aqua or teal color, and it says fall something. And then this hanging sign that is green, which I really love. It's got that pretty watercolor look. And I'm gonna start dismantling that because we won't need all the bows and the hangers. We're gonna start off with the aqua truck sign. We're gonna make a really nice kind of a glow up or an upgrade to this sign. I'm just gonna go ahead and take all the hangers off of the other things as well. You can save them, you don't have to cut them, you can untie them. Okay, so for this sign, I have this little stand that came with something that I got, I believe at the thrift store, but it was a, it's a sign holder. It actually held up some words or something. Oh, that sign says fall harvest. Okay, so if you have something like this, that would be great. But um, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have that. So I'm gonna go back to the truck here and take this white marker that came from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go around my edges and just kind of put a, a little more highlight on here with this marker. I'm going over the edges of it and I'm gonna be going around the bumper and all of that. You can do this if you would like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Also, you could use a brown for this. You could use um, a furniture stain marker that you can get from Dollar Tree, or you can use black, or you don't have to do this at all. But I wanted to make this look a little more high-end than what we have, so I figured a little more detail couldn't hurt it. You can also go over your pumpkins if you would like. I'm going to take my sanding block and try to get the remainder of that off. For some reason, when it was manufactured, it did not have a complete coverage on there. It just didn't. And so I thought, well, if I want to keep those words, I can go back over it. And I'm just taking a metallic marker here and just going over the words. Now, I sanded this down to where I felt was pretty smooth. But even so, when I went back over it with the marker, you can see there's some grit. And it's making the print not look so great. So I didn't like it. I did let it dry. And then I just took this... This is a sanding block too, but this is actually like a nail file that you can get from, I believe, Dollar Tree. And I've just sanded that off with kind of a fine grit so that I didn't go all the way through my white. And then I'm going to erase it now. So I'm gonna use some of this linen white chalk paint. You could use acrylic paint, you know, whatever you wanna use in here, or you could even use gray and maybe color the whole thing out so that you don't even have a, a little tag sign back there but I wanted to leave it, because at this point, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do here. But this gave me the ability to have some free space to write in, to put a sticker on, or whatever. So I've left this in the video so that you can see, you can fix your mistakes, and you have a few more options. Now, I'm gonna take the same bag of, of little words that I have had that I have used already from Dollar Tree. This is a wonderful value. There's six in a pack and I hope you can find them. They are just raw wood. You can paint them, you can leave them as is, you can use a marker, whatever you wanna do. And some of these words actually fit right on that, that on that little sign there. Now this one is the one I'm gonna use. It's a little bit large for it, but it doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna take this Cherry Furniture Repair Marker and you can see what the color is on paper. It's actually darker when you put it on wood, so you might want to test your markers out first if you get them. They come in a three-pack. I absolutely love them. Look at the coverage with these things. They are wonderful, and I have used them for furniture repair, and they work great. So you can choose whatever colors you want. There are lighter ones. You can, like I said before, you can use paint or some type of marker if you wanted to use a different color. Orange would probably be pretty, but my home is rustic, and I thought that this brown color is close to the color of the wheels and it definitely has that rustic vibe that I'm always trying to go for. 
little hot glue will attach this down and I'm gonna try to center it right there and just press it down hot glue will hold it there nicely okay so I'm gonna give you an option if you don't have one of those stands that I have you can easily use Jenga blocks the ones that come from Dollar Tree and make your own stand I'm just showing you here how to do it there's a little dent in my table so I stood these up on my um, ruler just so I'd have a flat surface when I glue it and I'm just going to end to end put this on here the sign's not heavy there's really no need in using wood glue or anything like that if you want it more sturdy and more permanent you can certainly use wood glue but I'm not going to be using this I'm going to use my stand I just want to show you how you can do it you're going to make two rows like this of six blocks each and just try to get them nice and straight and then you'll be able to sandwich your sign in between with some hot glue and that should hold it you don't have to leave them standing up you could actually lay them down and make it a little little more flat it may give it a little more stability well, there you go okay but for me I'm going to use the stand because this is what I have I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom of these tires and just try to get it seated down in the little slot here. It'll pretty much hold itself there until it dries. And then after it's dry, you can go on to embellishing. Now these little wooden stickers originally came from Target, but I got them at Dirt Cheap last year because I could get them at a very cheap price and I've used the same couple of packages of these wood stickers for two years you've seen them in my other videos I love working with these they're so cute and they're thicker than a regular sticker so they can stand on their own and I like that plus they're adhesive on the back obviously if they're a sticker but you can reinforce it with hot glue or anything that you want you're gonna see me moving these pumpkins around a little bit as I try to get them organized and try to arrange them how I like them and because they will stick there like that um, you can take them off and move them around a little bit if you don't press them down too hard but you get the idea it's kind of what I was looking at to see if I liked it and I'm just gonna move them around a little bit put some more of these darker colored pumpkins and remove a few of the little glittery ones you can always paint them if you want them a different color okay so now I have these little burlap type leaves I have two different types I have an oak leaf that is brown and I have a maple leaf that is orange if I'm getting my trees right feel free to correct me in a nice way of course the great thing about this is the long wire that comes off the back it will allow us a little extra mm, a little extra base to hold it down I guess it's kind of what I'm getting at because it'll go down in the slots underneath but I like the way this looks it looks like the truck is just speeding past the the pumpkin patch and some leaves are kicking up by the tires I like that okay so you can bend these because they are on a wire make them look a little more lifelike give them some dimension bend those wires together so that they stay in place and then you can just press that bent wire right down into that little crack that is underneath the truck in the little stand and it works out perfectly and I'm gonna stand it up and I'm gonna add some hot glue just to lock it in place do that on both sides you can trim it down if you want but I feel like all of this stuff touching in there together and the glue on top of it really holds it in place As I've said before, it's important when you're doing any type of, I guess, craft that you're going to have dimension. It's going to be more 3D instead of a flat, like a flat sign or something. You kind of want to look at it from all angles. Whoops, I lost the pumpkin. Look at it from all angles and make sure that you have everything the way you like it. All right, now, got to have a bow on this. This is too cute not to bow it up. So here we go. I'm going to use some of my thrifted 
checked or gingham, whatever you want to call it, ribbon, and I'm going to make an easy bow here. It's not actually named an easy bow, but it's pretty easy. You see what I did there. I made a loop, like a breast cancer awareness loop, pressed the loop straight down into the bottom part, and then so then we have two loops and two tails. Easy, easy. It's such a simple bow, and I use it more and more because it's just so, it's pretty. It's a pretty bow, and it's a simple bow, and I think with rustic and farmhouse, you want kind of a simple look, you know? I've just used a little bit of, um, this was the tie off of one of the signs, I think, and just repurposed it to tie that up in the middle, trim off what we don't need. I used that because it was laying there. I do keep my scraps, so I keep them to the side in case I want to use them for anything else. I'm just fluffing that bow out a little bit. Everything is dry. Everything is set up nicely and it is in place. And then I'm going to add this little bow over here on the side of the truck. It's gonna cover up the tag holes in the top. And I think it just gives it a cute little look. So fluff it out. I do this about a billion times when I craft. And I'm just going to cut these tails in a slant. And then you can use a little bit of hot glue. Just a little bit because you don't want it to shine, you know, to peek out through your ribbon. You almost want it to appear as though it is just sitting up there on its own. Now. This is a scrap off of something else I had. I'm gonna make, you see this really simple bow? Then I'm gonna double it so that I have four loops. All I did was double it back and now I have four loops and two tails. If you don't do the little, if you can't get that, that little double part, then you can surely do two bows and stack them on top of each other. We don't wanna make things more difficult than they have to be. But I thought this was cute, and it matches the kind of burlap that is in the leaves that we have there. I want to add a little more. So this is fabric, and feel free to alter anything that you get, any picks, any, anything that you get to make it your own. That's what the channel's about, right? Making it your own. So I'm making this leaf my own. And I'm just going to cut a little piece and tuck it here, because if I put the whole leaf there, it would be way too much way too big for that area. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull my wire off, put it aside, cause it can be used for another project. And I'm gonna trim down this orange leaf. And then just a little more hot glue and I'm gonna layer it on. I think I'm gonna put it behind there because I have the orange on the top. So I have a little variation in color there like that. And this is how it looks. And I like it. Do you like this little aqua sign? Okay, this is a metal sign. I really like it. I'm going to change it a bit though. What you're going to need is some wired ribbon, whichever type that you like. I'm just showing you there it's wired. I do change my mind on some of my, my um, ribbon, so there will be some changes here. I have some twine, and I got this thrifted. You can use whatever you want. That happens to be braided. This came from the thrift store as well. And these beautiful pumpkin picks came from Dollar Tree. I have three of those. I have this little random pick. And then I have, I believe this one came from Dollar Tree also. You've seen this wreath frames. If you've been following me a while, I've used it on many, many projects. It is just a square Dollar Tree frame. It is a 14 by 14 wrapped with burlap and hot glued in place. And I've gotten a lot of good use out of this. Now, I'm going to take the thankful off of here. I am thankful, but I'm going to take it off. I'm going to show you what you can do if you want to color something, if you want to make it a little different. Now, I've taken a variety of blues here. I've got navy blue and two other types of blues. And I'm gonna cover up Thankful. In case you wanna change this out to something else, you can certainly do that. So let me show you what you can do. 
I have found that a flat brush, and this particular flat brush is my favorite one, works really, really well when you're getting some detail work in straight lines. It works great for me, putting the paint down, and I just love it. It's very soft. So this is two coats of that navy blue. And because it is not the same color as the rest of the truck, I'm taking a little bit of blue chalk paint and the, the other lighter color of blue, and I'm just going to kind of dry brush over the back of this truck. This is to kind of blend the color out a little bit. It's going to make the color definitely not the same as the rest of the truck, but similar enough that it blends in. And I'm just gonna go over that until I get it the color that I like. I'm just kind of pouncing and dragging that brush across all over the back. And there you have it. And that's what it will look like if you wanna, you know, if you don't wanna add anything to it. But I'm gonna add some words, so I'm going back and I'm laying them down to decide which ones I think I want. I'm telling you, these little wooden words, if you can find them, best value ever, I think, at Dollar Tree for their fall decor. Also, you can choose any of these clings. They're easy to put down with a little bit of Mod Podge or glue stick. Just giving you an idea here. So I have several of these, and I will be doing a video with these. You can use ribbon to trim it out if you would like. You could take the other pieces of sign that came off of the green sign, trim it down, and use that. But for me, I'm going to take this worn penny metallic paint, and I'm going to use the Hello Autumn sign. I love copper. I've been loving copper in my decor this year, especially at fall. I think the warmth that copper brings is just... It's stunning. It looks so nice with all the rich fall colors. And I've went more toward this and kind of gotten away from some of the galvanized and gone a little bit more into the coppers. And I am very glad I did. I love it. I feel like it's more of me, my style. Okay, so I'm taking this braided rope here and we're going to frame this out. I wanna frame it out because I wanna give it a little more dimension. I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue, put it right down in the center of that braided rope, and then just pull the ends out. These uh, finger protectors came with my glue gun there. Love this glue gun, I will link it for you below. And then I'm gonna just add my glue here and just go up the trim around the edge of this tailgate. Little at a time. I'm trying to keep my lines as straight as possible. You do have to curve in the corners, but you can kind of press that down so that it makes a little bit of a straighter edge. But you know, tailgates aren't straight anyway. They're rounded anyway. Okay, so pressing it down and we're gonna go all the way around. You could just use jute or you could use yarn or you could use ribbon, whatever you like and that suits your style. I'm gonna use my little cutters here and just cut that down leaving enough room to be able to close up that braid. I'm gonna close it, and I'm gonna pinch it, press all of that into those fibers, pressing it down, a little more glue, and then I can trim off what's left, and that will keep it from fraying. Okay, so now this is nice and dry. Only one coat of that copper paint did the trick. I'm gonna add some glue on here and then I'm going to just tack it down to that braided rope. It gives me some space so I have more dimension and there's a little play of light underneath the Hello Autumn sign. I like that, I like the shadows. And I know I wanna put my truck in this corner. So now I need to figure out how I want to lay out my pumpkin picks. And I'm gonna do one on the side standing one on the bottom, kind of under the truck, and one across the top. And I'm not gonna put anything on that right side. This is easy enough to do. You can just take your little wire here, cut these off, and you're gonna make little pins to clip it down. Hey guys, if you saw that little sticker in the side, if you wanna show me some love, I really love coffee, and you 
can buy me a coffee. It's that simple. It's a great way to support my channel, support my habit. You can look in the links in the description box and get me a coffee. And I'll be forever grateful. Okay, so we made like little hairpin clips and we're just gonna push these down, making sure that we get a little bit around the wire wreath that is underneath. It's gonna keep everything stable if it is attached to the wire and not just the burlap. So now, I've just moved the truck out of the way and I'm gonna put my picks down. You can cut these to make them the right length. Use your wire cutters. You do not wanna ruin your scissors on this. Not, not your good scissors. And then you're going to just press through and attach it to the back. You're gonna see me do that here a little bit. Can you guys believe that I am almost at 3,000 subscribers? I am so grateful and I know I say that a lot, but sincerely, I am grateful. This is a dream come true for me to be able to work and do something that I really love from home. I can still do homework with my kids. I can still take care of my house. I can still cook. Not that I do that very often, but I still can do it. And I can still thrift. It's just wonderful. It has been wonderful, a great experience for me. And I really am, again, using the word grateful, forever grateful. I appreciate everybody who subscribes, everybody who views, all my thumbs up and thumb thumbs ups yes and all the likes that I get it's it's a wonderful experience and I can tell you now from the experience that I have had if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing a channel just do it it's this is very rewarding I've met some wonderful people through this okay so we're going to use another wire just like we used to hold down those pumpkin picks and thread it through that hole that's already there in the truck for us Thread it through the hole and through the frame and it will hold it there. But now to keep it from kind of falling through here, we're gonna use a piece around the tire and you can barely notice this. Same thing, you're just gonna make a loop around it right at the top of that tire. You can see here what I'm doing. Press it flat, pull it tightly and it's gonna stay in place. I'm gonna take my cutters and take this little, I think this is like a cattails, take these apart and start laying those down. Now the good thing about this is you can either put those through the wires that we use to hold down the pumpkin picks or you can thread them right through your burlap. If you wrap your burlap and secure it tightly enough to your frame, your picks should stay in there nicely for you. So you can see in some of these spots I'm going through the wire loops and into the burlap so that you don't even see the ends of the picks. It makes um, wreath making very easy using those burlap, using the burlap to wrap your frames. Now, if you wanna give your leaves some more dimension because the ones that come from Dollar Tree and some of the ones that you get from the craft stores, they're flat. You can just put a little bit of glue. I know you can't see what I'm doing right there, but you'll see in a minute. Little bit of glue right in that bottom piece and then pinch it together. That's gonna give it a little fold and it's gonna give it a little dimension. So it actually looks like a leaf that blew off the tree with a little crinkle in it. I'm gonna take some oak leaves. I'm going to take some maple leaves of whichever colors that you prefer. I'm using these colors because I like these colors. And just start adding those in the spaces where you feel like you need coverage. I look for spaces where I can see the wires still. I look for places that look a little bit bare and that's where I wanna add my leaves. So that's what I'm doing. I did overlap some onto the truck. Easy to do. You can see there how I did that. A little bit of glue, pinching it, letting it dry, and then just laying it down there. That gives it a little fold and it lifts it away from the surface a little bit. It's giving you some dimension so it's not flat. Cut off any bare wires that might be sticking out. I noticed that I had one and I went ahead and trimmed that down. 
and then I'm just going to try to as I lay my leaves down try to give some variety in color so that I don't have the same colors right next to each other gives your eyes a little something to dance off of it gives your you know your, your eye keeps moving it adds interest so that's what we like okay so here is my bow maker tool I made this it is a very popular video on my channel if you want to see how to make your own I will link that for you I am taking some gorgeous burlap and lace ribbon and I'm going to make I think this is a very simple bow to make. I could probably have made it in my hand, but I want to show you how to do it. If you have a bow maker, or if you're interested in making one, and, well, you're interested in how to make one. So this is what I'm doing. And you can see, very easy, these loops are about five, six inches. The bow, this particular ribbon, has lace on one side and no lace on the other side. So you need to twist it so that your pattern stays on top. Easy enough to do. This is a very good quality ribbon. I got it at the thrift store. It was a brand new spool. I could not believe it. But the quality is fantastic. It's a very stiff ribbon with wire. And I think it's probably mm, close to three inches wide. And then here is some Dollar Tree ribbon. It's a beautiful plaid. I was so happy to find it again this year. I used it last year on some projects and found it again because I ran out. Now this has the same pattern on both sides and it has a pretty coppery gold trim on it. And that is on both sides as well. So you don't have to twist it unless you just want to. I'm gonna add that on top of it. Same process. I fold my ends under and tuck them down it helps give a little poof to your bow. This bow is the same size. And you can just see me pulling the tails outward. I learned to pull the tails outward from Trish and Kay over at Crafting Cousins. Otherwise, I would have had them just sticking out to the side, but I, I like the idea of doing it this way. It makes it easier for, for when you get ready to fluff your bow. Now, this is not wired. This is an extra piece of ribbon that I got this year in the fall um, fall section I guess from Crafter Square but I thought it was very pretty and I like the difference in the size so I went ahead and put that on top it's not going to stand up by itself because it is not wired just know that if you decide to use non-wired it's a little little more difficult to work with I've just pulled that off and I'm using some florist wire to just squeeze it and twist it down and that blank space in the corner is where this bow will go All right, so I'm going to take the rest of that wire that was on the bow, thread it through the back, twist it up and press it into the frame. Now at this point, you can look at it and decide, okay, is how are the tails? Are they too long? You know, is it obscuring my truck? Is it overwhelming the frame? You know, just look at it again from all angles and decide what you need to do. It's better to leave it a little bit long and then trim it off because if you cut it too short, eh, you're not gonna be able to fix that. Okay, so I've decided since this ribbon that I chose has a lot more, well, richer, darker colors, those kind of jewel tones, that I wanted to go back and add some more leaves that were more in that color family, I guess. So these are wine colored and some reds and I went ahead and added those so that it would be you know that it would be a little more matchy a little more cohesive and you can see I fluffed the bow out over there already I try to spare y'all some of that I'm gonna add a leaf right in the top of that bow and then I pulled the pumpkin off under there because it was just kind of hanging and I've decided that I want to glue it down on the bottom. I've glued it. I used a little, I think I used a paintbrush to poke a hole in the top and then just a little piece of stem off of something else to make a stem on my pumpkin. And this is how this one looks. Pretty pretty. I like it. What do you think? I'm just showing you I've got some picks here that I might want to use. Definitely need some florals. I have a scrap of thrifted fabric. 
I have some of the, these are larger size. They're bigger than Jenga's. So I'm measuring those for you so you can see what size they are. If you have this size, great. If you don't, go ahead and use what you have. And I'm going to use this gorgeous thrifted ribbon. I pulled it right off of something else and brought it home with me. And then this gingham. Here is the little truck. And then here is a Valentine sign that I have used twice and we're gonna use it again. I'm gonna lay it down on top of my fabric, trim it off where I have at least an inch, maybe a little over an inch on the edges so that I can hot glue it. So I'm gonna put glue down and I'm going to tuck it over. And this is how this is gonna look. All the way around, glued down nicely, trim off what you don't need. And it kind of looks like an ironing board, doesn't it? Okay, who still irons their clothes, by the way? Is anybody? Okay, so now you can see what these blocks are for. I'm gonna make a little shelf almost in the back here. This is gonna hold this away from the sign and it's also gonna hold our floral foam so that we can do a little arrangement. I'm gonna use just plain hot glue here you can use something more permanent if you'd like, but because I recycle my projects and use them again and again on many different things, I don't want a totally permanent hold. If I do want a permanent hold, it's gonna be something that I don't intend to take apart. It's gonna be in my house a long time. So I found this cute little vinyl cutout. It's a peel and stick that came from Target, but I got it at Dirt Cheap. And there's two in a pack, and I thought, hey, let's try this. This is a Merry Christmas sign I got for 10 cents from Dollar General last year and I used white chalk paint on the back of it. I just used one good coat. Now I'm peeling this off and doing it with my fingers. In case you are not someone who owns a Cricut, then you wouldn't have transfer paper. So I'm just trying to show you here, it can be done without transfer paper, but you have to take your time and you gotta be sure of where you put it and when you put it down because the font is so thin that you would definitely tear something trying to lift it, I do believe. But there you go. And I'm, I'm okay with where it's laying because I can't change it now. Then I'm just gonna take my leaves and just add those on there, kind of wherever. And this is what we have for that. Now I'm gonna rough it up a little bit by taking that same fingernail file sanding block and just go all around my edges. I know that I wanna put it on the top. And in order to get my placement and to make sure that it is straight, I'm gonna use this little ruler at the top just to give me a little space here so I know where I wanna put it. I've added hot glue on the back of the sign and I'm just gonna press it down so that it doesn't come apart. You can put something on top of this to hold it in place until it is firmly set if you would like you could use some clamps over the spots with the glue so that it stays in place until it is dry. Okay, so now I'm just using my foam, my block against the foam to determine how thick I want my pieces of foam to be. I'm just using a metal ruler to just slice this right down. And you dust it off and get all that stuff off of there because it's gonna make a mess. I don't even have to use hot glue to put this in place. I've trimmed another piece for the other side and it fits in there and sits perfectly by itself. Now the truck is gonna sit like this and I'm gonna use this again as a spacer to make sure that I get my truck exactly where I want it. This isn't glued down, it's just a spacer for making this straight. I'm gonna use hot glue again all around the edges to place this down. I'm standing above it, trying to make sure that I have it somewhat centered. And I'm gonna place it down. You can slide it a little bit. Now I'm gonna weight this down because I don't want anything to come away. Now for the bow on top, I'm using this beautiful pumpkin ribbon. It is wired. And I'm going to just pinch it up just like that, same as we did on the other one but this one is going to be stacked. 
I'm going to add several layers on this one. I'm going to pinch this one up in the middle, put that on top. And then I was on the search for what I wanted to go in the middle. I wanted something a little more burlappy, something a little more neutral. So I took some of this burlap, I guess we're gonna call it ribbon. I don't know if you would call this ribbon or not, but it is definitely not wired. You can pull the edges away if you would like to, and that will help it to fray and make it a little more rustic. If you fold it against the curve, that will also help it lay a little more flat. And I've decided that it should go right in the middle. I like the way that looks. It gives a little buffer between the prints. Now I'm gonna take another little piece of scrap jute and just tie a couple of knots in the center there tightly so that it doesn't come apart. I'm just using my thumb to hold that knot in place because it will slip, it will slip. I'm gonna dovetail my ends here And like I said, pull, pull your little excess away if you would like a little bit of fraying. It's really a cute rustic look. And then I'm just going to fluff. I'm going to adjust a little bit to make sure that I get my loops the size I want. And then I'm going to dovetail what else needs to be dovetailed. Fluffing that bow as usual. You know how we do here on my channel. We fluff it to death. And then trim off this because you're not going to need this on, on here. We're going to glue it. Now I know I want it at the top. I'm going to put a good bit of glue up there on my top. Above that sign. I'm going to center it above there. And then use a clamp to hold it in place. This clamp actually came with my lighting kit. so But you can use any kind of clamp you have. So now I've switched up my florals. And I'm going to use these picks. Use whatever you like. But I like these. They kind of look, they don't look like wheat, but they give that airy feel. And I like that. I think it's a very farmhouse addition to this rustic project. As well as that striped fabric in the background. I'm going to add some of these little orange flowers here and there. If your picks are too small, then you can just add a pick off of something else. And these beautiful little puff balls. I don't know what these are, but they, they came from Dollar Tree, and I love them. I'm going to put them as little twinsies, and I'm going to put them in sets of two in here. I think they look really cute in here. What do you think? Do you like these? Have you crafted with these yet? I've seen a lot of people haul them, but I have not really seen people using them. So I'm just curious. All right, I'm trimming up a little bit on my bows. Again, trim where you need. Move things around. If you need a little bit of glue to hold things in place, you can go ahead and do that. And this is our third sign. What do you think about this? Cute, huh? All right, so we're gonna need a device to hang it. And I'm going to use a little hanger off of another project. I removed this off of something else. I'm gonna add some hot glue here, right around that hole, and just put it right there. It's not a perfect fit, but it won't matter. That glue is going to take up the space. So here we go. Here are our finished truck sign DIYs. What do you think? I hope that you try some of these. Which is your favorite? Okay, we're going to start off with some of this. It's like a burlap ribbon with gold snowflakes on it. It's about six, five or six inches wide. I got another piece of sparkly burlap and then some deco mesh from Dollar Tree. An 18 inch wire wreath some pipe cleaners and first we're just going to go ahead and put this together get this out of the way then i'll show you what else we're going to use we're going to start on the inner two rungs and go to each one of those little jointed pieces in the middle and just wrap it around one or two times to hold that in place now you might want to go ahead and jump over that little divider there just to make sure that your pieces don't slide back and forth if you want to do that now you can if not you can do it once you start placing your materials down all the way around here and that was easy enough right you might even have an 18 inch wreath that already has the the pipe cleaners on it and that's fine you can use that um, this will end up with 18 
of these little pipe cleaners. So we're up to the top now and in the center we're going to wrap those around those outside two pieces. And we're going to do that all the way around. You can use florist wire, you can use pipe cleaners, you can use really any color pipe cleaner because it's going to be hidden in the end. Whatever you have on hand and it's Christmas so I'm using up some of my Christmas materials here. This is my beautiful deer who will be added on here. It's just an ornament that I got at the thrift store. Okay, so we've got this deco mesh. You can find this in the Christmas and the fall section. And we're gonna lay it right over the top of this ribbon underneath. Then I'm gonna kind of bunch it up or kind of accordion pleat it in my hand. Gonna hold it tightly and go down and find a place to start. I'm starting on the inside because I want that little tail to go inside of my wreath so I just thought it would be easier to start on the inside section. I'm wrapping that around and you can see how it slides away from it and that's what I mean there. You'll want to wrap that pipe cleaner kind of around that center bar. If you do that, now it won't be pulled up or down. It'll stay right where you put it. Tuck your loose ends down then you're going to take a ruler and go down eight inches and just begin to bunch this. I started off wanting to make 10 inch segments, but I didn't think I was gonna have enough ribbon and I was correct. So I went ahead and changed it and what you're seeing is me doing little eight inch poofs. I'm gonna go back and forth all the way down. So here's eight inches. I first went to the outside. Now I'm gonna pleat it in my fingers and we're gonna go to the inside. just making sure that I have it on tightly. So then you can see here we're on the inside. Don't worry about the gaps on the outside because those will be covered up. These wreaths always look a little gnarly before they look good, but just trust in the process. Go to the outside, do eight inches, pleat it, and then go to the inside. You're just going to cross it over back and forth from the outside to the inside. We're going to zigzag back and forth. I'm going to leave this in so that you can see. See there? A couple of twists will hold it down. Eight more inches. Okay, now once we go all the way around the wreath and we're getting down to our original starting point, I'm going to measure my poof just like we did with the rest of it. Pinch those pieces together and I'm going to cross over right on top of the original piece that I put down. So you can see here and here, I'm going to go right back on top of that first section that we put down and just wrap it tightly around. If you do not wrap wrap these tightly enough when you begin fluffing them and you're going to have to pull these segments apart you'll pull them right out of the out of the frame there and you don't want to do that so save yourself some time and just do it first do it right the first time a little extra effort on the front side end is going to help you in the long run so and there i'm just pressing those tails through there just like so now i wanted to add some of this this is like a mm, it's I, don't, I can't even tell you. It's almost like a plasticky material or some type of a coated fabric mesh that is gold. And I thought, wow, for glam, this is going to be stunning. Plus, there's a lot of highlights in that deer that are bronze and gold. And I thought this would really make it look uh, really nice. So I'm just going to loop this over back and forth. Same process. Start on the outside, move inward. Now, the difference here is I'm not going to use a measuring device on these. What I'm doing is looping them over so that it sits right on top of the other one. If you do that, then the little poof underneath is all you need to help measure. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go from the inside to the out. You can see me crossing over inside out in the same pattern that I did the ribbon and the deco mesh. And see here, this is where I ran out and I have a gap. So I'll show you what to do. Don't worry, this does happen sometime with wreath making, not a problem. I'm going to take the end of another piece and I'm just going to overlap them like so. Press it into that wire and then twist it tightly down. Now you have a continued length of ribbon. 
See? No problem. Continuing around, and we're almost done here. Once we get back to our starting place, we're going to make sure that it is twisted in tightly, and then you can just trim that piece off. You can tuck it under whichever way you want to do it. Now we're going to start pulling these little poofs apart, and I'm going to alternate back and forth. I'm using the word alternate a lot. So we have the burlap, the deco mesh, and the gold mesh, right, in that loop. Now we're going to do opposite. We're going to pull to the outside the burlap piece, then the deco mesh, and then the gold. Then we're going to switch back to the original way. You see here? You see the little process. So you can see each color. Continue around just like this, and if you got those wrapped up tightly enough, you should be able to move these with no problem. They'll stay right where they need to stay. Continue around, fluff them out. You can see what a big difference and how much larger and thicker and more substantial this wreath is already, just pulling these layers apart. What do you think about these colors? I don't usually do like the gold, but this is really stunning together. I think it looks very elegant. So this is what it looks like when you get it all fluffed. Very pretty. I've chosen some greenery picks here. This is what we'll be using. But we're going to go ahead and cut our ribbons into 9 or 10 inch pieces here. I think I'm doing 10 inches. 9 inches. So, because we have 18, and I have three different types, we're going to do 18 pieces of each ribbon. I did run out of that gold mesh up there, so I went ahead and substituted a sheer ribbon that has some gold wire on the edges, and you'll see that shortly. Go ahead and dovetail all of your ends to give it a nice, beautiful, finished look. This is going to give it some texture. I'd also like to add at this point with these ribbons, um, it's really good to give yourself a lot of variety in your ribbons. Different textures, made of different materials. Wire always helps when, re when you're making a wreath. Um, it's not always necessary if you're using shorter pieces, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So we're going to just layer these together just like you saw me do, like an X and then one in the middle. And then you can move those around and decide which piece you want to be on top, which you want to do in the middle. And I thought maybe that brown and bronze piece looked better in the middle. Kind of separate those two gold pieces. You really won't be able to tell once it's placed down in the wreath, though. I'm going to use these handy little clamps that came from Dollar Tree. I use these for wreath making all the time. So here's that other ribbon I was telling you about. It's got the little wired edge. And then here's the original ribbon. So I have nine of each set. And we're just going to alternate them. So you're going to pull it out of the pick. It's just simply a little clip just holding it for you until you're able to get it where it needs to go. And you're going to pick your section, starting on the outside. And you're just going to press it straight down in the center and twist it with a couple of loops. Then you're going to have your ribbon bundle right where it needs to be. You can fluff it out now. You can wait to the end to fluff it. You can do a little here, a little there. Whichever way you want to do it. As long as it gets done before you hang it up. Okay, so we're alternating now. We're taking that other type of bundle and putting it to the inside. So all the ones with the sheer will be on the outside. All the ones with that gold mesh will be on the inside. Continue around. Make sure that you're grabbing all of those pieces, that you get them all in there where they need to be. You can move that stuff around, you know. Make sure you're finding it and placing it where it should be. And look how much more full it is already. Once it's fluffed up, it looks really, really nice. It is so high-end. The results of this wreath even shocked me so i hope that you stay to the end and you see this beautiful wreath it's really got me rethinking the whole gold thing don't be concerned about those green pieces they're a different color i like it like that i can tell exactly where i'm going what i'm putting where 
those tinsel pieces will be wound back down into the frame or cut off, whichever way you want to do it. I'm going to use mine just as they are to hold down my greenery picks, so I'm not going to cut those off. I'm going to leave them just like they are. Continue all the way around. Fluff everything. Touch everything. Move everything around. Make sure you don't have any folded over pieces because sometimes they get jammed together. Just want to make it look pretty. Have intention with everything that you touch on your wreath. Just continue around. I know I'm not completely in, in your view there, but you get the idea. So I'm going to take these little pieces of greenery picks. I'm going to fold the stem on itself and twist it so that I have a little loop there. It just gives me a little something bigger to wrap around my wire so it won't slip out and I don't have to completely gob this thing down with a ton of glue. And hot glue can also damage your deco mesh, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to continue around. I think I had like mm, seven of these picks left over. I'm just trying to go through my stuff. If you have followed me for a while, then you have seen my wall of flowers, and the amount of stuff I have collected and not used is ridiculousness. So I'm trying to go through and use up a lot of things that I already have. And we're going to continue around here, just twisting and tucking in what we're not going to use because I'm not going to be needing those pieces of tinseled pipe cleaner for anything else on the bottom of this wreath. So it's time to tuck those things away and be done with it. Just going to fluff those in. I'm going to leave three pipe cleaners on the top untouched because I'm going to need a place to put a bow and I'm not sure where I want it yet. Now this is a pack of pinecone ornaments that came from Dollar General according to the packaging and my the person who donated all of the supplies to my channel, um, this was in that bunch of stuff. So I'm using it. I'm happy about that. I'm glad I'm getting to use those things. The 8,000 subscriber winner is aware I've got her address and her package will be going out today on Monday. So I'll be happy for her to get that. If you've received anything from my channel, please let me know that you have received it when you do receive it. Because I just want to make sure that it gets to you timely and that it does arrive at the right place. I'm not a scammer. You know, I want to help you and I want you to get your supplies quickly. So I, shipped, I ship it quickly to you. So... Just keep that in mind. Also, we're coming up to our 9,000 subscriber giveaway. It will be here before you know it because I'm only a few away from 9,000. The goal for me before 2022 is to have 10,000 subscribers. So I would love for you to join if you enjoy this channel. Um, I would love to have you here as part of our family. Moving right along, we're going to work on the bow. So we're going to just flip this bow over and I'm going to do like a 10 inch bow. And this is so easy. You just flip this. This is just a scrap I had, you know. It, it, you Maybe after Christmas you're running low on supplies. Go ahead and do what you can for your winter decor. Go ahead and use those pieces. So I'm just going to make a bow with this, just flipping it over, counting my little tails. I know that I want to have uh, two loops on each side. And then, of course, there'll be little tiny tails that are on there, but they aren't a big deal because you, we're going to trim those down. You can leave them there. You can... You can treat them however you want, but you'll see that in a minute. So here we go. So this is a little over 10 inches. It's 11 inches. Then I'm going to take this sheer striped ribbon that I have been using in the rest of the wreath. I'm going to fold it over. What did I do? 10 inches there. And I'm going to fold that over a few times. I think I end up with like six loops on this one. So fold it over several times. This one does not have any wire in it, but is a very good quality ribbon. I have no idea where it really originated from. I uh, got it at a thrift store, so I do not know. And that's 10 inches. Going to cut that off. Put it aside. And then that Celebrate Holiday. Is that a Hobby Lobby ribbon over there? I don't know if, that's, if that brand is... Where does that come from? Or it even could be Target. I don't even know. 
but I'm just going to use it too. It is wired. It is beautiful snowflakes with gold and bronze and kind of copper. Really, really pretty. And it's on a, like a brown, a rust colored background. Gorgeous. Okay, so now that we've got all of our bundles cut, we're just going to fold this in half and then we're going to notch it. It's a really thick bow and on really thick bows the notching helps tremendously. So we're just going to cut through the wire and just a little bit into the fabric. You can feel it with your scissors when you're cutting. I'm going to fold this one over. There's no wire but I still want to make sure that it is able to be fluffed nicely along with the rest of the layers. So we're just going to do this for continuation. Folding this in half, we're finding the center, cutting through just a bit there. And then we're going to stack these pieces together. Alright, I'll start off with jute. You're going to see a bow bow in just a second. This is why I don't like to use jute with bow making. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we're going to go in the notches. I'm just slipping that straight down into the notches, like so. We're going to do it with the next set just like that and then with the ribbon that is underneath it okay so now you're going to take your jute and tie it I suggest a pipe cleaner because let me show you what's going to happen when you try to pull it tightly and this happens a lot All right, so that first of all, you've got to use your hands and really hold it and try to make your ties without moving your finger because as soon as you move your finger, it's going to slip out and it is not going to be as tight. So this is me attempting to keep it super tight, holding it with my other thumb, trying to move the knot and watch. Oh, but look, I recovered with a zip tie. That's right, a zip tie. Should have used it originally, but I didn't. Okay, so now I'm going to zip that around the middle. It's going to go right in the same notches that that Judy is underneath it. And then I'm going to clip it off. And you are not going to pull that thing loose. No, sir. So, how we fluff the bow is to start on the bottom layers. The thickest bottom layer, we're going to pull those little loops out. This is very thin. You know, I keep saying burlap, but I believe that's like a linen blend. It's, it's thin. It's very pretty though. It's got just a, a light sprinkling of glitter or iridescence in it. It's really pretty. And you know how we do it from there. Start on the bottom, then you go up to the next row, and then we go to the top. And just pull it apart. Now this is where you can cut off the little tails that are left, or you can dovetail them like this. You can also cut them at a slant like this. Whichever way you want to do it. There's another little dovetail. Okay. If you're enjoying this video, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel, and it is so very honestly appreciated. Now we're going to start on the tail of the bow. So we're going to use this ruler, which is the 18-inch ruler. And then I'm going to just kind of grab that 18 inch mark and then fold it over on itself. So this is going to give us 36 inches. I will end up trim trimming this in the end, but to begin with, I wanted to make sure I had plenty. I'm going to do it again so with this, so I have two pieces of this uh, snowflake ribbon. And then I'm going to do it again and hit the camera with the gold. And now this one, I only have a tiny piece left. So I'm going to fold it in half, kind of crease it, and then cut right down the crease. So now I'm going to have a ribbon with this pattern. It's easy with this. It's another way to stretch that ribbon. I'm just going to pull it down and then let it overlap in the middle so that it's the same length as the other ribbons on the end. What of that trickery? Did you see that? You can do that too. And then when you cinch it together, it's not going to move. You can trim off the little pieces that are under there, but just be sure that you got it on there really tightly before you do that or you will pull those two pieces that you put together completely out. So go ahead 
and cinch it, trim it up, and then this is what your tails are going to look like. We're going to go ahead and add them down. So the middle pipe cleaner on the top, I'm going to go ahead and press that down and twist it around. My little helper's down there to the right. He had his fingers in the screen if you saw that. Now I'm going to trim off these because I don't need it anymore. I could use it for the bow if I wanted to, but I'm going to attach the bow in a different way. You can go ahead and attach all your stuff together before you put it on the wreath if you want, but I didn't do it that way. So you can just weave this since it's made out of wire straight through the back of your bow and now you have a way to attach your bow straight down on the wreath. And this also will let you have the bow up a little bit higher than the wreath level or sink down a little bit deeper into the wreath, whichever one you like. You can just twist that back, fluff that beautiful bow. I think a funky bow would be really pretty on this wreath too. But I didn't have enough wire and it really needs uh, to be wired ribbon for a funky bow. So, I'm just pulling my tails out here and looking to see what I think I want to do because keeping in mind we have to fit that deer in there somewhere. So we need to find a opening and a place where the deer can be seen. So I'm just going to trim up how I think this would look good here and there. And I do like this shorter especially because there's going to be a deer in there and I, I really want him to be noticed in this wreath because you know I'm a rustic girl so I prefer all of my rusticness. And I know that I want him right here. He does have a hole under his chest which I don't show you there but I knew that a dowel rod would fit and that would be a perfect way for me to have him stand in there without gluing him onto anything. So it almost looked like he's leaping through the wreath and the greenery. So I've just poked it down into that wreath form. I just wove it. I know you can't see the bottom and I do apologize for that. So I've put it underneath the top one and then underneath the bottom one. And it's just kind of through the, just poked through there. Then I'm going to use the pipe cleaner and just catch it around both sides so that it doesn't shift back and forth and add some hot glue to keep it still. And there he is leaping in the center of our wreath. Always, always, before you hang it, fluff it, put everything back where you want it to be, do your final critiquing and your final trimming, and then you'll be good to go. So here is my beautiful, elegant, rustic glam wreath what do you think about this piece it was quite a bit of work to make this wreath so it is not going to be something that I could just quickly throw in with other crafts so you get to have this one all by itself in this video thank you so very much for stopping by and for watching I appreciate you more than you know our family is growing and I could not be more excited about that. Genuinely, genuinely, I'm excited to have each and every one of you here. Keep on commenting. Keep on asking me questions. I love to talk to y'all. You can see that in the comment section. Again, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye! Alright, using Dollar Tree items, we're going to start off with one of these little wooden boxes. Doesn't matter which one you get. I have some of these napkins, and these are the longer ones. I have some spackling and a little spatula. We're going to start off by filling in the holes in this little llama. I chose the llama because it seemed to have smaller holes, less work to have to do. So I'm just gonna take the spackling with my fingers. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. This washes off easily and I'm gonna press it down in each one of those holes. You have to kind of press it and then push it to the side, otherwise it'll just go straight through. So you have to kind of do it at an angle to make it stay in there. We wanna fill these in because we're gonna be putting something on top. Now I've taken the flat side of my spatula, you can use a scraper or anything that you have, and just pushing it down 
and then going across the top. So you see what's left on the back, you just can scrape those little crumbs out and put them back into your container. Now once you get those all filled in, you'll be ready to let it dry. There you go. Be sure you put your lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. Then you'll want to put it in a place where it can dry. And while that is drying, we're going to start working on the bottom part of the box. You can use paint, you can use stain, you can leave it the same color it is, you can use furniture markers, whatever you want to use here. I'm just going to take some of my antiquing wax, I love this stuff, I'm going to add some water, that's all that is in that bottle. Mix it up to make a stain. It has virtually no smell and is very easy to clean up. I use wipes, you can use whatever kind of, you know, wipes that are okay for your skin. They seem to work really good, baby wipes, whatever you got. I'm gonna dip it in there, kind of, you don't wanna to put too much in, you don't want it dripping necessarily, but enough to give you the coverage that you want. You can always add more to it or put another coat on there if you want to. So you're just gonna go around all of the sides and see, you definitely wanna protect your surface because it does make kind of a mess. This is a wax, so be sure you mix it well with your water. Okay, and then be sure you go around that rim on the top. You want this to have a nice finished look. We want everything to be nice and clean. Go along on the inside of the box. I wanted to show you this instead of completely taking it away because you can get into those corners and you'll have no white spots left. And you're just gonna go from side to side. I like the wipes rather than using a brush um, that just works better. It gives me the coverage that I like and it's still sheer enough that you can see the wood grain and I think that that's important. We're going to make something really cute with this box. Alright, so we're going to put that aside and let it dry. Once your spackling is dry, you're going to go around just the edges. You're not going to go on to the top. We're going to do something different there. So just carefully go around the edges of this box so that it matches the bottom. Or if you're painting, instead of doing this technique, you know, you can go ahead and put your paint there too. And then we're gonna do also the inside. It's really important that that spackling is dry when you do this, because if it's not and you press down, it's gonna push the spackling out the front. Then you're gonna have a mess. So I'm gonna go on top and put down some linen white chalk paint. You can use whatever type of paint you have. You can use acrylic. It really does not matter here. The reason I'm using white is because I want my watercolor napkin to really stand out. So there we go. I'm going around the edges carefully so that it doesn't get on the sides where we stained it. And I'm just making sure that there's no holes and you don't necessarily see that little llama through there. So there we go. Once it is dry, you can see the outline a little bit there, but that won't matter. I'm gonna flip it over and just trim out around the box top. You don't have to do this exactly. This is, it's so much easier to do it this way. Don't bother yourself with trying to cut something so thin perfectly. So I'm gonna use some Mod Podge here and I'm just using the mat. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit out there. You don't wanna to get too much because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to make that tissue paper of that napkin to tear. So just enough that it's gonna give it a, you know, some stickiness. And then you're gonna take just a single layer, so be sure you separate your layers and lay that on the top. I'm just lightly laying it and trying to get it centered before I press it down. You do have a little bit of room to, to move here if you need to. And then from the inside out, I'm just gonna press with my fingers. Don't be too concerned if you get little wrinkles here and there, it's okay. This is watercolor and it virtually disappears. So you can see here, I'm just trying to, to press out and away from the center and press down around my edges. Just like that. Simple. I'm not concerned that it's hanging over and that there's some pieces that, you know, are going over the top of the box. That's not a problem. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm not going crazy with this Mod Podge, but I want enough to seal it in so that this will last. You can use glossy, you can use whatever, you know, Mod Podge you wanna use. If you like a glossy look, you can do that, but I think with the stain, it's gonna look better if I use matte, so that's why I chose it. Okay, and now carefully with your fingers, you can just push away. I'm pushing, not pulling. I'm pushing it down and then letting it kind of slide off of there. It's not wet, you know. It's only wet where the uh, top of the box is. So this dry part will pretty easily come off there. I'm just gently rolling off some of the pieces there. And then once it dries, you can take a sanding block and just very gently brush away the little edges and you can see how pretty that is with the the colored sides there with the stain sides i think it looks really nice it's a very rustic look and of course you know i'm always striving for rustic but you do whatever you want these videos are for inspiration so you do what you like now what a cute little gift idea guys i wanted to show you this so here it is complete all dried and ready to go I've taken some raffia and stuck it in the bottom, or whatever this is, excelsior grass, whatever this is. You can use paper shreds. Then I've taken some seasonal candies here. These are just some chocolates. And I'm gonna put these down in the box. They're matching colors. Put the lid on it. What a cute little gift idea. So we're gonna go back in the inside of this lid now, since we know what we wanna do with it. And I'm using a window cling. You can use a sticker, you can paint this, do this however you wanna do it. You can use a piece of fabric even maybe. Make a special note and attach that. Whatever you wanna do here. I'm just gonna clip this off and make this work. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive just to try something different. Protect your surface here, make sure the area is ventilated. And then put down my little leaf. And by the way, the leaf has stayed here. It's you don't have as much time to work with it with the spray adhesive as you do with a uh, glue stick or Mod Podge. So be sure you get it where you want it because it is not coming up. So I'm just gonna rub that down and make sure it stays. Then I'm gonna put our lid back on, take a little piece of jute. I'm just kind of making sure I have the even amounts on the sides for my bow. You can use ribbon here. You can use um, anything you want anything you want here some string you can use some baker's twine um, whatever whatever looks good to you but this is rustic to me and I like it farmhousey rustic very cute just making my bow look pretty and there we go isn't that cute who wouldn't love getting that as a little pick-me-up give me a thumbs up if you think you would enjoy something like this okay so on to the next one. We're gonna take some little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, another one of the same napkins, and then you can get, I got mine thrifted, this little wood piece, but it, I think it's a seven by five, I think is what I measured. But you can use any little wood piece that you can get out of Crafter Square. Different shapes, but the same purpose probably. Gonna use a paint repair marker also, and then I'm just trying to decide again which of the little cutouts I'm gonna use. I'm making sure that the surface is smooth enough. Sometimes when you get them, they're not sanded, so be sure that you sand it down or it's, it, it could cause a problem with getting everything to stick down. And your finished project won't be as nice if you've got little pieces of splinters poking out everywhere. It's harder to work with and you hurt your little fingers. Then you can't craft. Nobody wants that. We wanna keep you busy crafting. Okay, so for this one, I am going to use a glue stick. Just to show you, if you don't have Mod Podge or school glue or some type of a liquid glue, you can use a glue stick for this type of thing. Now, I fussy cut this napkin. I mean, I left some white spots and I am totally okay with that. But off camera, I got, I got in there. Try to remove as much white as possible, but I'm not gonna sweat the other pieces of white that are still there, not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just pressing this down. Again, try to make sure that you lay it in the right position first because when you try to pick it up, it might tear on you and you don't want that. 
Rather than cutting off my sides here, I'm just gonna go press them down. I'm gonna press them down into that little dip and I like the way it looks. I'm okay with that hanging over, not a problem. I'm gonna go around it with my glue stick and press it right down. And it kind of makes it look a little more like it's hand painted maybe. You just wanna be careful. Use a very gentle light touch, little feathery strokes to make everything stick down. This is so thin and you do not wanna tear it. If you do, no big deal, you have a whole pack of napkins, but you know, save yourself some time and, and be gentle and careful the first time. Now you can just take the glue stick, put it on your finger, go around all your edges so that this will not peel up. And this is almost like sealing it in because we have a layer on the bottom and we have a layer on the top. Okay, so this needs time to dry, but it looks pretty, right? Once it's dry, we're gonna make a final decision about which one of these we wanna use. It came in a pack of six, and I've used the other ones on other projects. So four projects I've already used, and now we have two more. And I think I'm gonna go with blessed, because I do feel blessed. I'm blessed to have you here. I'm blessed to have all my subscribers and viewers watching and leaving such kind comments. I'm blessed for the coffee that I get from you guys. I'm just blessed in general. My whole life, I'm just blessed. We need to remind ourselves sometimes. It's so easy to look at the negative things in our life. It's so easy to dwell on it, but we need to reflect on everything that we've prayed for and we've been given. Okay, so we need a stand for this, and I'm gonna use one of these that I got at the thrift store. I think that brand comes from either Michael's or Hobby Lobby, not sure, but it makes a really good base to hold up a sign. So I'm gonna coat it down with some glue, that's some hot glue, place this down on here, make sure I got it in the right position in the back, up as high or as low as you want it, press it down, hold it until it dries, and you can see it stands up nicely. Very balanced, it doesn't tip or totter one bit. Now we're gonna take this little stained wording with some hot glue and place it down. So I switched directions on this. I was just gonna do a little sign here, but then I decided to do a little something extra. I should have gone ahead and painted the base of the stand that it's on before I glued it down. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now, and it's not a big deal because it's a paint marker and this is so simple to do. It helps if you're doing a project that actually is wood and you want it to continue to look like wood, if you kinda go with what you would think the grain would be. So if you're going side to side, do the entire thing side to side. If you're going up and down, do the entire thing up, up and down. Did you see that? 30,000 subscribers, guys. Is that not wonderful? Yes, it is. I love y'all so much. You're making this channel grow and it's so important to me. It means so much to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you're inspired by my videos and I'm glad that you come back and see me every video. Okay, now the base is stained. The same color as the, woods, the little wood wording. Now I'm gonna put a simple bow right on the top of it. and just trying to decide, do I want it on the side, do I want it on the center? Well, I decided on the center, and then when I did that, guess what else I decided to add? Yeah, you'll see in just a minute. You can decide, at any point when I'm doing these crafts, you can stop. If you like the sign like it is right now, you can stop where you're at. If you wanna add a little something extra, add a bow. If you wanna add a something even extra to that, add some greenery, add some flowers. In just a minute, you'll see what I decided to do. I think you'll like it if you're a fan of all things rustic. Okay, so I'm just pulling that bow a little bit, pulling the tails, pulling the little ears up, trimming off my jute. Always put more than one knot so it will stay for you. So this is gonna go in the top center. It's gonna go on the lip there, right in between the where it appears there would be like a step down. I'm gonna put it right in the top there. 
and you're going to need to hold that for a minute so that it doesn't slide or move on you. And I'm just holding it while I keep playing with the bow. And it looks good. Protect your fingers because I did get in the glue there, but it wasn't too hot, so I'm okay. Still got my fingerprints. And I'm just trimming up to make sure that my bow has the same dimensions on each side. And you can stop here if you would like. Super cute just the way it is. Or, yep, I decided to make a little pumpkin out of it. I'm gonna take this little stem here. This is just a piece out of the little bag you can get at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna put it right on top. Give it a minute, holding it in place so that it will dry. Oh my goodness, is that not the cutest little end touch? If you like it, let me know. Okay, now I'm gonna take another pack that's got a bigger picture on it, and these are the bigger napkins. So these are probably what you would, maybe dinner napkins, maybe they're luncheon and dinner napkins, I don't know, but they're two different sizes. There's rectangles and squares. These are the squares, you let me know. Now I'm just taking this apart because I can use the other section for something else. I'm gonna open it up, cut it, and then I'm gonna take my layers apart. It's easier to cut if you leave both of your layers on there um, until you're finished cutting, then you can peel them apart. Again with the fussy cut, I sure did. Now this is a Dollar Tree frame. It had something else in there, but I've already used it for another project. I'm gonna use it again. It already, I had already put, in the, put the yellow and white checked paper in there for I think it was a summer project. But it looks really good, I think, with this watercolor. So I'm gonna take my glue stick and put it all over that paper. It doesn't matter if it gets on the paper in an area that you're not putting your pumpkin. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna show. It will dry sheer and you'll never even know. I'm gonna try to center this. By the way, if you get, if you're doing this and you don't want to cut around all those little extra leaves and stuff like on the bottom near that sunflower, just cut that stuff off. Nobody's ever gonna know. And I really think when you do these projects and you put them out and you share them, nobody is ever gonna know this came from a napkin except maybe from a fellow YouTuber or a crafter. Nobody would even know. It's such a high-end look. I love how you can see the plaid right through the pumpkin that I put on top. I love that. I'm just going over my edges and very gently over the top with my glue stick. So I've shown you a couple of different techniques of how to use the glue stick when putting these down. You just be very careful, that's the important thing. I've gotten kind of used to it. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna work a little bit on the frame. You can use ribbons, you can use jute, anything that color coordinates to go on the top of here. Or you can leave it alone and not add anything to the top. I'm just going to take my jute. I'm going to take three pieces of it. This is about maybe seven or eight inches long. I didn't measure it, but just to give you an idea. And we're just going to put a simple bow here. All of this just overlap together. And I'm just making a little shoelace bow. Carefully tucking all those loops on the inside and then you're just going to gently pull back and forth spread the loops apart work on the knot section so that it stays tight there for you and then trim off your tails at whatever length that you like and i think that will be precious right there and i, I do realize that bows are not for everyone and that's fine but I think fall is a comfy, cozy time of year, and any little extra texture that you can add just really makes a piece pop, and it makes it, you know, makes it your own. Gives it a little extra something for your, for your eye to find interest in. So there it is without it. And then this is what it will look like with it. And I've taken a little sunflower that just came off of a sunflower garland that I had from the thrift store, and we're going to add that too. I'm going to add the bow, and then I cut the little stem part off the back so that the sunflower will lay flat. Otherwise, it'll be at a weird angle, and I don't want that. And just press it down right in the center. 
And that is that. What do you think? Cute, huh? So, here are all of these projects added into the rest of my project so you can see how everything coordinates. I'll be linking the playlist for all my fall videos so that you can see all the projects in the background that you didn't see in today's video. And they fit in nicely and they are so cute. I'm so happy with all of these. I do have some that are not shown here. But they will be in that playlist, so no worries, you can find them. Look at that. So cute. What an interesting thing to be able to use something totally not intended for crafting. You know, a napkin, it's totally intended for a different purpose, but we've taken it and we've used it for something that is just beautiful. Best napkins I've ever seen at Dollar Tree, by far. Probably the prettiest napkins I've ever seen. This is a wire form that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna give you some measurements here so that you can find something similar if you don't have any at your Dollar Tree. You can certainly trace this out on a piece of foam board and make your own form. It'll work too, I've done that before on witch hats. I have some felt, just a little scrap here, but it's enough to cover most of my form. And this is going to be the backing. You could maybe use some construction paper or something like that on the back of yours if you choose. But this works for me because I had some scraps that I need to go through anyway. So rather than donating, let's use it. Leave about an inch around each of the sides of the form and then I'm going to cut into the corners here because we're going to wrap this around the wire form. Now my glue temperature setting is on low, so it's a cooler temperature. It's going to be easier to work with because I'm going to be using a lot of glue and it's going to prevent some materials that I use later on that are questionable when you're using a very high temp glue gun. So we're just going to use cool for this project. I'm just bending that over now, pressing it down onto this form and onto itself. It doesn't matter that my corners aren't covered, you'll see what we do with that later, but certainly if you have enough material to cover yours, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to wrap the bottom here. I find that using a squiggly line or a little zigzag gives me a little bit better coverage. I'm just pressing that down. You don't want to squeeze your form up. You don't want to change the shape of that wire and it's pretty pliable. So just be careful there. Follow the shape of your form. And I'm going to go all the way around and do the same thing. This is going to be the back. So what you're seeing is actually the inside and you'll understand that in a few minutes. You'll see what I'm gonna do. So the point is gonna go a little bit higher than the actual point on the witch's hat because I liked a sharper taper on this. So there we go. It's got a little ratty looking end. I am totally okay with that. Now I'm gonna take a pillow. This is just one I'm gonna use to take the stuffing out of. I don't have any pillowcases to fit it, so it was also in the donation pile. I'm just gonna take that apart, fluff it out really well. So it's not compacted or too lumpy. We want it to be cloud-like or wispy. Then I'm going to take, again, the cooler temperature glue. Start squeezing that out on the bottom of the triangle part of this hat. We're not going to go onto the flat or brim part of the hat with this. I want to get, this is going to be like a padding. So our hat's going to have some dimension rather than being a flat hat. So just going to continue along like this and make sure that it is on the inside and not bulging out over the outside, making sure we don't have any lumps that are bigger than anything else. And we're going to start off with a layer that's going to be pretty much the same width or thickness all the way down. I'm going to continue along and you can see that we have that nice and covered. We can still see all of the black edges. And that's good, we wanna do that. 
Now about halfway down or two thirds of the way down, we're gonna start thickening up on that section. That's gonna be a little wider, just like it would be with a regular hat. It's gonna be wider at the bottom because that's where your hat goes. That's where your head goes. Okay, so I love this contact paper. It came from the Dollar Tree. I've seen it used on lots of videos and lots of projects, but I thought what a beautiful, shabby, chic, witch's hat this would make. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna peel this apart and you're gonna see that I have a little bit of a problem here getting off a clean finish, but that doesn't matter. That's not gonna show, it's gonna be kind of trimmed off. So you see there on the side, a little messy, that's okay. All right, so the pretty side down, now I'm gonna put the fluffy side of the hat down on top of it. So all of that batting is now on the adhesive side of that contact paper. Now I'm gonna trim this out as well. Just gonna start by trimming in the bottom and I wanna leave more than an inch on the sides. I wanna leave more of like probably two inches because we want to allow for the room that the, the batting on the inside creates or that pillow fluff. We don't wanna squish it down till it's flat. So just pulling it and wrapping it around, pressing this down. My contact paper stuck just fine to this felt. If yours does not, go ahead and use a little bit of that glue or maybe some spray adhesive to help tack it down there. So I'm just going to wrap that part and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the brim there. I'm pressing it down, then I'm gonna cut and fold it down. That way I can still create that curve on the bottom. So see there? Now we still have that nice flat front, just like this, and we have the curve. So making sure that the batting is not in the brim, go ahead and pull that down and start pressing it down on the felt on the bottom of the back of that brim. Now you can either trim off that extra on the bottom or you can wrap it around, it won't matter. I'm just wrapping the tip up there, elongating that hat just a tad, and you can see that it's padded. It's got some dimension, and I love the look of it. It came out exactly how I saw it in my mind. And you know when you're crafting, it doesn't always turn out that way. You start with the idea, and you think, I'm going to run with this, and then you go completely off course, and you do something else. I like it when a plan comes together. Okay, so we're going to start with this lacy black trim. This came from uh, Goodwill. You can get yours wherever you like. Then you're gonna start laying it down. Now I want that, excuse my head, I want that line down there close to the bottom for my first row because we're gonna layer this going upwards and I want it to be thick and lush. So that means we're going to have to layer it pretty tightly in here. Now because I'm using a cool temp glue, it that bead of glue will sit right there on that. If you use hot glue, it's going to run down on your table and you're going to make a mess. Going to continue along just like this, layering over the top about hmm, probably a quarter of an inch, I would say. You can see where I'm running that bead of glue for each one of those layers and you can do it all the way up. Keep in mind, this is a curved and if you're using a straight piece of ribbon, you may need to kind of bunch it up a little bit to get it to fit the curves of your hat. Okay, so we're gonna cut it a little bit longer because we wanna cover up that top piece. So you're just gonna fold your lace over and press it down. That's gonna give it the little black edge there. Just gonna tuck under here and then keep going. And I'm going to do this process until I get up where the hat meets the brim. So the base of the hat, the triangle there, meets the brim. Easy enough, right? And I think one more run will be perfect. Y'all have to excuse my head. I'm standing up because I had to raise my camera way up high to be able to get this in the view for you. Okay, so same thing here. It's curved, we're just gonna curve it on around, let it do its thing, we're not gonna see it from the back, so this is not gonna matter. Now, I also found this pretty mesh at uh, Goodwill as well. And I thought, well, it's a piece of, I guess, sheer material, sheer fabric. I'm just gonna kind of a accordion fold it or gather it up like this, 
and we're going to tie this to make like a sash around the hat. Now I did not have any longer piece than this. I would have loved to have it hanging down like a veil, but I didn't have enough for that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I had to use it on this piece though. Clearly it had to be used. It's very Victorian. I'm going to take that glue again on a cooler temp and be very careful that you don't burn your fingers, but the thickness of this is allowing me to touch it without hurting myself. And I'm going to press it down. And then you want to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Keep it in mind that you want to keep it as low down to the brim as you can so there's no gaps. Just like that. And by the way, if you're looking for any of the products that I use, most of my tools can be found linked below in the description box. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so just so that you know that, um, I want to let you know that I do earn a tiny bit of money from it, but it, it's at no extra cost to you. So I just put those down there because I think it would be helpful to you, and if it helps you, then it helps me. Okay, so rather than tying in a knot, which would take up too much of the length of my little sash here I've decided just to loop it over and tie it off and I'm just tying it off with a little scrap piece of raffia that I have but you can use ribbon you can use a zip tie whatever you want to use if you want to do it the same way as me now it's time to make it look very fancy we're gonna start using some picks use any type of black picks you have if we're doing black and white I have some weeping willow I have a Dollar Tree pick and I have some thrifted I think those are oak leaves down there and I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see what I have, and see how I want to fix this for this hat. You could always go right across the brim on the bottom if you would like to do it this way. But I think I'm going to try something different. So trim up where you need to trim. And layer these on, just like I'm doing here. I try to keep these in my hand once I start cutting them down so I know exactly where to put my ties. These little picks from Dollar Tree are amazing, in my opinion. There's so many different pieces on there. You can really trim them up and cut them down. You'll see me do that on a project later in this video as well. So right now, we're just going to leave this as one piece. I'm going to take that bottom, that second piece of oak stem, and put it across the bottom where the stems are so that you can't see them. And it is hid, and it makes a beautiful little swag, don't you think? I have some black zip ties. I'm going to put those around here. These are great. They come in a huge pack from Dollar Tree, so you really, really save money by buying them there. Clip it off. And then now we need to attach it down to our hat. Now, I already had this piece left from the sash, which is glued firmly in place. So I feel like it's going to be strong enough for this part just to tie it on right across where we attached it with a zip tie. So that's what I'm doing. Tying it off in a few knots, trimming that off because we don't need it anymore. It's done its job. And then I'm going to see how I want it to hang. Do I want it to lay off to the side? Do I want it to stand up a little bit more? I think it needs a little bit more support. So I'm going to just take a piece of floral wire and flip this over and attach it right from the little stem here to the frame underneath. And it stands up like this, just off to a little slant. And you can see here where I twisted it, right there. It's staying in place quite nicely, just like that. Okay, so now the bottom part of our hat is done. We need to work on the top up there. I've got some of this really cool mesh tubing and it's kind of like uh, spiky or tinsel-y like. It's got little things poking out of it. I don't know what you call that. But um, I got those from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section. And I thought, that's so cute. And it kind of looks like spider legs. So I'm just going to tie those up. And then I want to put a jewel on there, right? Yes, a ruby would be beautiful since we have that red rose. So I'm just going to put some glue in the center. And place down this beautiful jewel because this is a very regal witch and we want her to look lovely and by the way these leaves are velvet they're so pretty I'm gonna tie this on and then tie it right on that little extra piece at the end of the hat 
It elongates that hat. It really brings your eye up there and continues that beautiful richness from the top all the way down through the bottom. Once I've got it tied on, I'm going to glue it down because that is contact paper, which has a slick surface, and this could easily pop off. So I'm going to glue it down and trim it up and a little more glue behind that stone just to hold it in place. And I have no idea where I got this stone from. It was, has been in my craft supplies, so I'm not sure where it came from. Now, I wanted to dull this down just a bit because it was coming off a little bright. And she is a witch, so she's probably had this hat for a millennia. So I took my little furniture markers and just colored that down a little bit and uh, deepened up that color. Now for the hanger, I'm just going to use a twisted piece of floor wire into a loop, press it down right over where that rope or that little piece of jute was before, let it dry, and then it's ready to hang. What do you think? This is definitely a different spin on a witch hat. Goodwill. You can definitely use those floral foams. One, you would just cut like the top third of it off and invert it on top of a, another one that is completely one piece. And then you would get basically the same shape. But I'm going to show you how to use it with what we have. So, some greenery picks in a reddish color. I've got another Dollar Tree pick, some red ribbon, and some more of that black trim. Love these. I should have gotten more. Really, really love them. I think they come in a purple, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a purple. Okay, so I have scraps of this left, and I thought, you know what? Let's do a wreath form. Let's, let's give her a beautiful ball dress. So, of course, proportionately, you would never wear these two things together, but it gives you an idea of her having her dressing station and all of her goodies set up so that she can be beautiful and she could be queen of the Halloween ball. That's how I see this witch. She's a good witch. She's not bad. Okay, so to cover this top part, I'm just putting some little darts almost in here so that the bodice part, which is where my hand is, would go over the chest, would narrow down into the waist. And so in order to make that lay flat, I need to cut some slits up to that area and then just press it down. Very simple. And then you will see that it starts to have somewhat of a female shape. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim this off here because there's going to be something very special about this dress that you'll see at the end of the video, so be sure you stick around. Okay, now, because I don't have anything to really attach my contact paper to, I'm going to use a little bit of clear tape. The bottom of this dress is going to be wrapped with contact paper. This is so I have a nice, even, easy surface to attach down my lace trim. So I'm just going to cut down my contact paper. I got this from Dollar Tree, so you can find yours there. It's going to be about the same height as it would be up to the waist area of that dress. Cut it down, take the backing off, and then I'm just going to lay it where it needs to be. Now, for this shape, I'm going to basically try to get the bottom to fit first. So I'm sticking it down on the tape that's there, and that's why the tape is there. It has something for the contact paper to grip to. So I'm just pressing down with my fingers and I'm going to be trimming off what I don't need. So once we get all the way around, I won't need any excess. It's just in the way anyway. I'm gonna cut down to where the bottom of the dress starts to taper upward and then pull and overlap. You're not gonna see this, it is not a problem, but there you go. Now it's like a little closed in cage and we can put all of this lace right on top. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and start going around. Again, please use your cool temperature and protect your fingers. I didn't do it here. I should have had my finger protectors on, but I really wanted to get this video out to you, so I was rushing. People are enjoying, it seems, my Halloween content, so I am trying to make sure that I give you lots and lots to look at, lots of inspiration. I know I feel very inspired when I get comments from you guys and, you know, encouragement and love and support. It really makes me keep going. It really keeps me motivated and um, it just lightens my mood. It lightens my day and it makes 
this amount of work so much easier to do. So I appreciate it so much. Can you guys believe we are over 4,000 now? 4,200 and something. So if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look in the link down in the description box. Thank you. It's certainly not required, but I'll give you a shout out. Okay, so when we get to the top and we're trying to finish off the waist section, we're just gonna fold this over kind of straight and then trim it down. Don't worry if this doesn't look perfect because we are going to embellish this, of course. So what do you think? This is a pretty little dress. Got her beautiful flowers on the top and the lace layers on the bottom. And we need to make the lace lay flat. So we're just gonna take a couple of snips here into the natural little areas where the lace goes upward. We're just gonna put some little slits there and that's gonna help it lay flat when we put it down. So you'll see in just a moment, it's gonna be a little blurry, but you, you get the gist. Okay, see? See now, it'll stand up straight and you can see the little lace on the bottom. I want to trim the top, so I've cut a piece of lace down. You can see how I'm trying to see how much I need. I'm gonna trim it. I'm gonna use that cool glue again. And then working in little sections, I'm going to go around the top with just the trim part of that lace and press it down right over the top. Just like that. Are you guys enjoying this video? Do you like witch decor and your Halloween? Good witch, of course. Nothing bad, nothing negative, nothing, you know. This is a, this is a good witch. This could be Glinda the good witch at Halloween. Who knows? But I hope you do like it. And I've got lots of Halloween videos and all kinds of inspiration and goodness. So be sure you check out those videos as well. I will have them linked. All right, I'm just gonna give a little extra trim here to cover up any extra glue or mess that I have there. And it's the same mesh. I'm just gonna go around there. Do not press this mess. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Do not press the mesh down too firmly because it will go flat on you. It will be completely flat instead of cylindrical like that. Next, we're going to put uh, almost like a belt and we're gonna cut off a piece of ribbon here for that. And I'm going to cut my ends in a slant. You can dovetail um, or anything that you prefer to do on yours. And you don't have to use wired ribbon and you don't have to use a piece that is this big. Totally up to you, whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one of these picks and continue to cut it apart because we're gonna use this in separate parts. This is a smaller item. So the little spray of flowers that we're gonna put on her waistline is going to be a bit smaller in scale than what is on the hat. So I'm just, you know, kind of looking around, seeing what I think I might like. I love this. And this is not a rose, this is like a carnation, I think. Okay, so I'm going to play around with my placement, see how I want each one of these little individual picks to go. You do whatever looks good to you, and certainly you don't even have to cut this apart. You could leave it into one piece if you like the way it was, or just bend it around on the wires. But you'll have to cut the big stalk, that big chunk on the bottom off so that it lays flat. It's just going to be easier for you to work with. Take another one of those zip ties and zip it up. Trim off your extra. I always use my clippers because I don't want to mess up my scissors. So I use these little bull nose pliers. Okay, now I'm just twisting around their own wire so you can do that. And then going to decide how I want this to lay. What's going to be the top? What's going to be the bottom? I'm going to use this little ribbon sash that we made and it's going to go right around that section. It's going to hold it down better than glue would hold it. Well, that's my opinion. That's my opinion and experience. And I've been doing this a long time. I always say, do what works for you. Now, I wanna add some more red in here. And I think that the beautiful reddish color in these leaves from this thrifted pick will work great in here. So I'm just gonna add two of these pieces, just the oak pieces off of here. Thread it up. If you have extra pieces of wire, just cut those off.
just like that. Now you can put some pics in the top if you would like and you will have a beautiful little arrangement. Those are my leftover pics or you can leave it just as it is. Whatever you choose to do is going to be great. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Art that I thrifted and I put a just a decal on several years ago. I'm going to use some more of that batting. You can get all kinds of rub-on decals by the way at Dollar Tree. I'm going to put that batting on the inside. I have a little bag of creatures. This came from Dollar General a few years ago. I like to buy these things for the kids so that they can do projects and that we can make goodie bags for Halloween at school. So I've just picked out all the black ones because that's kind of the theme we're going with in here. And I'm going to place some of them down in that batting or that fluff. Just like that. Here and there and on the outside and sitting on top. And it's going to look sort of like this. Then we're going to take one of these little lights from Dollar Tree. Pull the tab out of the bottom and turn it on. And it's going to look just like that. I'm going to make a little hole. I'm just using my fingers and the back of my little spatula here. And I'm going to turn that light back on and poke it down as far as I can get it in there. Cover the top. Cover it up with a spider. And put the lid back on it. And then we're going to have a little spooky deadly delight jar that's glowing. It looks better when the light's off, believe me. Okay, so those are our three witchy projects. Our Victorian shabby chic fancy witch. And here's what our little arrangements are going to look like displayed. What do you think about this? I gotta tell you, I'm kind of digging this. And you know I love my orange, black, and white, but something about this, even my husband said he really liked that. He couldn't believe that I made it. I love that. So encouraging. There we go. Look at that. So would you put something in the top of that or just leave it as is? And look at the bottom. I put a candle in there. It's a flameless candle, so now her dress will glow. Isn't that perfect? Again, I thank you for all your love and support. I thank you for stopping by. And hey, if you love this and it's your first time coming by, I'd love for you to subscribe and join our family. For the first project, we're going to start off with some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got little red trucks with a black background. And this is in the Crafter Square section. I hope you can find this. It's so pretty. Some Rust-Oleum flat paint. It's white. I'm going to use a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I love the tag signs. And then I have some thrifted and some Walmart and I'm not sure where the other red ribbon came from. Then I'm just going to have some random picks that I might be using. And we're always going to start off by removing tags and hangers. Give this a good coat of spray paint, only one coat. And then once it's dry, we're going to flip it over on our fabric and trim this down to fit. You want to leave enough on the side so that you can fold it over and hot glue it down. Be sure you protect your fingers. You might not get glue on them this way, but you can certainly feel the heat from the glue. You can easily flip your corners in like this to make them nice and neat. Or do it any way that you feel like you want to do it. And we're going to go all the way around just like that. And when you get to the top, it's just an easy fold over and a little bit of glue and it's sealed in there. That sign is completely covered by that fabric. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this extra stuff here to make it kind of flat in the back and use a piece of this uh, paper and cut it down and put it on the back. Now I'm going to take this believe sign or word. Um, there, It comes in a three pack. And I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with that white one good coat is all it needed. And then decide what type of ribbons I want to use to make a really pretty bow to go on top. 
Oh yes, I remember now. This red ribbon was thrifted. I'm going to do about 18 inches, maybe a little bit over when you see me cutting here. Not exact. And I'm going to dovetail both sides of it. And I'll be doing the same process with each of the other ribbons. Just cutting, I think I probably cut two of each. We'll see when I start counting. So this is what's called a funky bow. Very easy to make and you're going to be happy with the results, I think. It's important that you choose a wired ribbon for these bows. You're gonna go halfway down after you folded it over, kind of pinch it in the middle, and then you're gonna squeeze it tightly in that joint between your thumb and your forefinger. Same way here, go about halfway down, pinch it toward the center tightly, and then squeeze it into your hand. Hold it in your hand. Same thing with the next piece, and I'm alternating pieces of ribbon, the different prints and designs, so that it will um, give us more variety of color in our bow. You're going to continue this process with the smaller ribbon there, that I think it's a one inch piece of ribbon. You don't have to squeeze that in the center, it, you, it'll just go right into your hand easily. Okay, so you can see I've tried to keep the exact same colors away from each other just like that and kind of disperse these colors and patterns evenly now when I first put this in my hand I put it next to the other one but you see I don't like the look so I'm just gonna pull it out and move it to the other side and so far I like the way this looks I love all the different patterns and textures so far now we have like a little bouquet you can use a twist tie you can use a piece of uh, pipe cleaner but I like to use my zip ties especially for this particular bow it's a really thick where I'm holding it it's very bulky right there I did not take my hand off of that bow at all I just used my other hand to wrap it around and then just pull that zip tie tight go ahead and cut the end off and then you can start fluffing that out we're gonna pull them away from the center and downward like petals on a flower away and down away and down just like that opening up your loops and then here I need to adjust just a little so I pull down just a little bit if you get your zip tie on really tight you won't be able to move it at all I was surprised I could move it because that thing is on there tight flip it over and then start pulling these apart and you want to do the same thing with the tails that you did with the loops above separate the patterns flip over those patterns to make sure they're all the pretty sides are down for now so that when you flip it over they will be up just like that now just pull those pieces back out like you had them very easy to do and that's why it's important that you use a wired ribbon uh, otherwise everything's just going to be kind of flat it's going to lay flat we want a nice poofy bow isn't she pretty okay now, I'm gonna put that believe word back on there. And I thought maybe I would use a little bit of ribbon to help it stand out. Looks good like that, but I like to layer. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this green over the last piece of that ribbon, just that scrap of ribbon I had left. I'm just gonna trim the green down a little bit, make it look a little bit neater, and then protect my fingers and put a good bit of glue under the ribbon now it's gonna press up through that ribbon on the bottom and catch the ribbon on the top so it's all glued nicely down now I'm gonna use some of this E6000 when it gets clogged just run a little piece of wire down there and you can get it to work again I'm gonna squeeze a little bit here and there on the back of this believe sign so it won't pop off you know how metal is with hot glue and then very quickly and carefully add some hot glue Kind of eyeball where it ought to be and then press it down and now we're going to add a good bit of glue in the center of that bow on the bottom and flip it over on the top wherever you want to put it mine's closer to the corner to the left corner there now do you feel like you can do this bow i think you can we're going to add just a little bit of greenery this is a thrifted pick that came from dollar tree and i well, no, Walmart. And I'll be using this pick a few times in this video. This greenery, rather. 
but you can get anything you want from the Dollar Tree, anything you like. I like this one, it has a little bit of frosting on it, just a little bit of frost, tiny bit of glitter. And then I'm just gonna tuck it in on that side, and then I like the placement of it here on the other side going downward, so I'm gonna place it there. And this is what that tag sign will look like. You can use it as a leaner on your cabinet if you would like, or you can put a little hanger on the top. You can use whatever type hanger you want, but because this is a piece that is kind of out of balance, meaning that if you put it right in the center, it's gonna lean to the side because of the heavy bow, you might wanna use something like this so that you can slide it back and forth on the nail till you get it hung exactly as it should be. Project number two. We're gonna use some of these thrifted Merry Christmas ornaments. We're only gonna use one and I think it's a four pack. Just like that, very glittery. I'm gonna use another scrap of that same piece of fabric and we're gonna use one of these Dollar Tree ornament signs. I'm gonna start by removing the, the hangers and the tags like we always do. And then I'm carefully gonna pull this metal piece up. It's thin, so you don't wanna break it. And then I'm just pulling off the hot glue off the back just to clean it up so it'll lay nice and flat when we put it back down. I'm gonna trim off enough here and Mod Podge it down. This is a satin finish, but you can use whatever kind you like. It's all gonna stick it down just like this one will. Gonna get good coverage all over where the fabric's gonna touch. Hey, if you wanna show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Check out the link in the description box below. Find your space and press it down. Thank you for the coffee, Denise. Okay. Press it down from the center outward so you don't have any wrinkles or bubbles in there. And you could always iron your fabric if you would like to first, but um, I'm not like that. I just, I'm not gonna do it. I know I can do it with my hands and save a little time. Okay, now I'm gonna add my fabric, my Mod Podge on top of my fabric rather, all over, all the way to the sides. You can even see the edges through there. Thick coat, and I'm gonna put it to dry overnight. I'm gonna cut off the little hanger pieces here and remove the ribbon and just make it look more like it's not an ornament. You know, make it look like it is intended to be wording for a sign. You could probably cut this thin plastic off with a pair of scissors if you'd like. And I'm gonna use some Mod Podge sealer to seal in my glitter a little bit. Take it outside where it's ventilated and do that. Spray it down good one coat. Okay, now once this is dry and this is the next day, I'm gonna come in with my utility knife, flip this over, and trim with that blade right next to the sign. And it is going to cut, be careful, keep your hands out of the way. It's gonna cut a nice, clean edge. Look at that, gorgeous. That Mod Podge, that overlap made a nice edge like a piece of paper would be. So it's very easy to cut like you would cut paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm gonna sand my edges just a tad and I'm just using a, a foam block, sanding block for that. Down and away, down and away, until it is finished. Now, I've chosen some of this thrifted ribbon, and it's actually some type of a trim, I think, but it's sort of velvety and shiny. We're gonna use it to trim out the word in just a moment. Now we're gonna use a little bit more of this E6000 on this metal piece and a little hot glue, quickly moving around here flipping it over and then we're going to use some clamps to hold it down. These little clamps have been a lifesaver to me. They came from Crafter Square in the Dollar Tree. Add on your hot glue here. and That's all you really need for this plastic piece. Just some hot glue. And then try to get it centered. You will notice in the end product that mine is not exactly centered, but you know, it's okay. I don't mind. Dollar Tree can't even get it exactly centered, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on myself. Now, I thought it would be cute to just have my word overhanging the little ribbon trim a little bit, so I did it like that and just kind of wiggled it under there, and I'm gonna use some hot glue on the back side to glue it down. I'm gonna put it under there, and then try to get it close to the same measurement on the other side, and then glue it down on the back side as well. 
Easy to do. Now we'll take off my little clamps. And once it is dry, and this is what it looks like. All right, on to project number three. We're going to use some of this Rust-Oleum paint. We're going to use another pick. My E6000 again. A little hot glue. This cute little tray that I got from Dollar Tree with the truck on it. And then I have some ribbon from the thrift store. This plaid. It's not the same as the check that's on the truck, but that doesn't matter. It's okay. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon and then some more Dollar Tree ribbon. Cute. I used this in another project for fall and I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to cut off this hanger because we will not use it in this and then take this wheel out and spray paint it. The front one time and the back one time. While that is drying, we're going to go ahead and fix our little a way, we need a way to attach this to the wreath. So we're going to do it with these pipe cleaners. I'm using a little bit of E6000 along with some hot glue because, like we said before, hot glue is going to pop off of metal a lot of times. So just be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you do your projects because it's very frustrating to get done and then have things falling apart. So I'm going to put a clamp on here to hold it because I want to be sure that my E6000 is sticking down like it should. And Dollar Tree has a, um, a comparable adhesive that you can use if you would rather use that. If that's what you have, you can use that. And then I'm going to clamp it down until it is dry. I gave that a day to dry. And my wheel is now dry. And I'm going to just lay this down and figure out kind of where I want it to be. And flip it over and just wrap around those spokes for the wheel. And I'll tell you this, and you're going to notice this later when I'm putting the greenery on. This thing will break easily. Now I'm surprised I didn't break it with the first one that I did, but this time I actually do break it and I fix it. So be sure you're paying attention because you want to be sure. I don't want anybody to give up on their project just because they have a bump in the road. You can fix little errors like that. So I know that I want these to wrap around like this and they're going to be connected with this piece of um, this floor wire. And you'll see here, see how it's broken? How that little spoke is apart from there? I just slid it down, that piece of greenery started to wrap and then when I wrap the greenery down and get it somewhat secure, I'm going to wrap around right there to catch that spoke and then wrap it back and forth and back and forth to hold that spoke right there in place. And then you can secure it with a little bit of hot glue and it won't come apart. See, that was easy to fix, wasn't it? Now I'm gonna overlap these and with any additional wire I have, I'll just use that and I'll add more wire when needed and then just continue to wrap just like this. Now the greenery that I'm using is good greenery it's from Walmart, but it is a good, it's a very good quality. The feel of it, it just feels like it's good quality. It does have some gaps where I have wrapped it and it's kind of flattened out where I've wrapped it. So that's not a problem either. We're just going to pull another one of those picks apart and then overlap those pieces just like that. And these are the pieces that just pop, the plastic pieces, they pop right off the wire. You just pull them sometimes when you're arranging, they fall off. It's that easy to do. So you're just going to use those and add those along the way in any spots that look bare or that need a little more fullness. And then one more piece. I thought maybe one above the truck would look nice and it is going in the opposite direction and I did intend for it to go that way. Um, if that bothers you, you can certainly do yours, you know, in another direction or cover the entire wreath if you like. Now I just use that stem to wrap around the wheel and then I'm using my wires to wrap that around there as well. Then just a little bit more on the top and holds it in place. And then like I said, go ahead and go back and put more on where you feel like you need to put more on. Alright, so so far so good. Now we want to add a bow and I'll tell you this bow is very easy to make. You're just going to fold it over on itself several times. 
and I end up with this pattern of ribbon. I have three loops on one side and two loops on the other side. I just miscounted. It happens sometimes, but you know you go with it, right? We work with it. Then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon and do the same thing. Just fold it over and over and over until I have at least two loops on one side and two loops on the other side. Or folds. Depends on how you look at it. I'm going to cut a piece of this ribbon right here and it's just going to be used to attach it together to the frame. Alright, this is going to look like a little bow tie. See there? Squeeze it up, pinch it up, and then decide well, if you want the pattern of the solid color on top. I'm going to put my pattern on top like that. And then I'll be using a zip tie to close it off. You can use whatever you would like to do this to, you know, hold your bow together, whatever you like. And then once I have that bow secured, I'm just folding it in half and sliding that down before I tighten it all the way. Make sure it's even in the middle. I can start fluffing this out. And of course, once I start fluffing it out, that's when I realize, hey, I have extra loops that I didn't think I had. So, happy mistakes? Yes. And I'm just going to pull them all apart. You know how to fluff a bow? That's what we're going to do. We're going to fluff them all out. Uh, I think I ended up with five loops on the bottom too. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to wrap around the center and then secure it to the frame right in that open spot. You flip it over and tie it in a few knots. So easy to do. And now we're going to work on the tails. This is about 18 inches here. I'm just going to fold this over and dovetail it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the red plaid. Then I'm going to stack the red plaid on top, pinch it together, place it down in the center of that piece of ribbon that tied it to the frame, and I'm just going to tie that in a few knots. That's what's going to be our tails. And because we use wired ribbon, it's going to stand up and stand out and look very pretty for us. So I'm going to pull these tails through the frame. You can curl these with your fingers. You can tuck them around and under floral. I've, I've tucked that plaid one there. You see behind the truck, I just pressed it down behind there. And then this red, I don't know, is this metallic? A metallic ribbon. I'm looking to see the right side of it. And there we go. I just flipped it over. Very easy. And then I'm just going to feed it through the wire here. And do the same thing on a different spoke with that plaid. Isn't that cute? I like the way that looks. But you can do yours any way you like. Now I'm going to use a little mini ornament from, I think it originally came from Walmart, one of my viewers told me. And put that there. It's going to be on our door. Then I'm going to trim down this ribbon. And we're going to make a little bitty bow. I've seen people make these bows before, like on a fork. And they're really cute, like a real tiny bow. But I'm just going to do mine like the breast cancer awareness um, tie. I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to tie that extra piece that we cut off right around the center. Just like that. A couple of knots. Make sure it doesn't slip out. Then I'm going to flatten it with my fingers a little bit and decide how short I want the tails to be. Trim them down a bit. Now we're going to glue down that little mini ornament. I'm just wiping that glitter off of there. Press it down and then you can certainly use your E6000 there too. And then put my little bow right over the hole. And I decided that I still wanted to use a little bit of this ribbon. So I'm going to make, you can make a ribbon like that, a bow like that, or you can flip it around like I did the other ones. Flip it around a few times, and we're going to have four loops when this bow is done. Easy. We're going to use a piece of jute. We're going to fold it in half, find our center, tie it off, and then we can tie it on top of the other bow. Really, really really easy to do. We didn't even have to notch these bows. 
All right, so again, pull those loops out. You can trim the tails that are on the inside because we don't have intentional tails in here. So you can cut those off, make them a little shorter, just like I'm doing, so that they don't get in the way. And we can plop that little, looks like a four leaf clover, right in the middle, wrap it around and just tie that jute where it is at. Now that thing should be very secure in there. But like I said, feel free to use a little bit of hot glue if you need to to make sure that it doesn't move around. Mine is staying there fine. And I think that that extra ribbon really did the trick. It really brightened up that top part and I like it a lot. So now we need a hanger. We're gonna flip it over and use another little piece of pipe cleaner. I ran out of white, so that's why I'm using the brown. And just wrap it, twist it around there and then move over just a little bit on the other side of that spoke and go ahead and wrap it again. And now you have a little hanger and it is hidden behind the greenery. Go ahead and trim off any extra wire that you have back there just to keep it from scratching up your wall or your door, wherever you're gonna put it. And there you go. We're gonna make a little miniature red truck ornament. This came from Dollar Tree, it sure did. Here's some more of that Walmart ribbon that I showed you. I have some scrap ribbons, just a bunch from the thrift, the thrift store. I have another mini ornament. Some of these little bottle brush trees probably came from Dollar Tree. Here's some mini ones that are dark green and then I have a couple of little pieces of randomness and a little piece of foam, a little scrap. We're gonna cut down the foam so that it will fit inside of that truck. It's hollow in there all the way up to the front. Measure it out, cut it up, glue it down. Okay, now we're gonna work on this little ornament, cutting off the hanger. I do end up putting in some um, spackling into that hole to fill it up, but I'm measuring now to see how tall I want my little sign to be and using just a little scrap of wire here that I have. It's kind of like a florist wire. I would love to have you subscribe to this channel if you have not already. We do lots of budget-friendly DIYs and we try to do things that are unique and that bring us joy. Okay, so we're gonna start just pressing those down into the back of that truck. These already, they had plastic stands originally, but I removed those for a project I did last year. We're gonna make this tree look a little bit shorter by just going up about half an inch, cutting it off, pulling off the little extra little pieces there and getting down to the wire and then we're gonna stick that down into the foam too so so far we have two trees back there i'm going to use a little bit of this apple barrel white paint and a little brush that also came from dollar tree and i'm going to put this on these green trees just to give it a frosted look because the other trees are snowy looking so we want them to kind of match like they've all come from the same place, right? They're in the back of that truck. They all took the same trip from the tree farm. There you go. And then you gotta be sure to let those dry. See the difference? Be sure those are dry before you handle them. It doesn't take long. I dry my things in front of a fan. Cut the bottoms off of these. Then you have a wire just like the other little trees. And you can place those down wherever you like. I'm gonna place mine around the other trees. There we go, so far so good. They're looking better. We can put that sign in now. I think it looks great for that. Okay, so here's a bow. You've already seen how we made the other ones. I did this one the same way. Cute little bow. And then I'm gonna put a dot of glue on the top of the sign and just put that right up there. Pretty, pretty. Simple, 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 little bitty, perfect for a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray. Just gorgeous. Okay, so there are a couple of things you can do with this now. You can leave it like this, or you can continue to add, and I'm going to do this in layers so that you can choose how far you want to go with your little truck. I've just folded this over, made one little loop in the middle, and then two tails. I'm using a little piece of floral wire to twist around the center. I'm going to do this tightly and then take the excess off the 
off the end so we're not poking our fingers. We're gonna flare out the tails. Now, I saw this on a larger scale um, by Kathy of my DIY, and uh, so I'm gonna use it here in my little arrangement. I'm just gonna use another piece of that pick, hot glue right in the center of it, and then let it dry, and then we can use these as picks. And they look like, you know, just a little extra decoration in there. I decided that I would like mine to be dovetailed, so I went ahead and did that to the ends, placed it back in there. And I want them to look the same, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. You can use pre-made bows, anything you wanna to use to embellish yours. Or you could use an entire bow, like the one I put on the sign, rather than using these little pick pieces. Whatever brings you joy. So since I have one on the back, I'm gonna move one kind of diagonally from it up on the other side. Just like that. So here we have it so far, like this. I think that's cute. But we can keep going. I went ahead and used those little scraps of green picks I had. I put a little white paint on there and we're gonna add some snowmen. These are mini ornaments that I got at the thrift store. And this truck has a little, like a dent in the top of it that was already there, it was made like that. I don't know if it was an error or not, but it's the perfect place for me to set a little snowman. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue there and set my chosen snowman right down in it. There you go. He looks happy up there, doesn't he? It looks like somebody has taken their, their little truckload of trees to town and they're ready to sell them. And maybe they're sitting there with their hot chocolate or their coffee and they're They've made a little snowman to keep them company while they wait. Okay, so if you wanna to add to the front of this truck a little wreath, you can do it with pipe cleaners. You know how to do that, very easy, which is what I've done here. And you can add a bow on top. You will see, after I do that, that I decided I did not want the red and white on the front. I felt like it was too much with the bow pattern that I have here. So this is what it would look like if you chose to leave it this way. Cute, cute, no problem. Or you can take a piece, a little scrap piece that you have and be very, very, very careful. You have to hold this a long time now because it's gonna try to flex apart. This has no wire in it, it's just the plastic. But once it is dried and cool, you can go ahead and put it on your truck. And that's where I'm putting it. Now you can see the glue, but you won't be able to once I get done. And I like this one better. See, the bow's gonna go right on top of that. And I was praying for it not to pop back open once I put that hot glue on there. And it didn't, yay! Okay, precious, oh my goodness, I'm having too much fun. So, while I'm still in the zone, I'm gonna take some more of that white paint and just put that as a, I don't know, a little sprinkle of snow right there on the front of the truck. But now, we have to put snow on our truck, right? No snowman is going to be there with no snow. So now I'm just gonna put some snow on this truck, all around the little snowman, on the hood of the truck, and all the places that snow would naturally fall and catch on your vehicle. So I'm kind of going above the hubs. I'm gonna go above the tires, on the high points of the door, places like that, just to give it a little bit extra. And I was scared to death to go too heavy handed, so I just did it a little at a time. But you can see there, I just took my finger and wiped away what I didn't like. And that was fine, and it did fine like that. My little, I had a camper trailer to go on the back, but it didn't fit right, so I just left it off. But this is what it looks like. Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness, this is so cute. This may be my favorite one of these projects, but I really like them all. What do you think? Okay, so the last one, pretty easy. We're gonna take one of these box bags from Dollar Tree. One side is kind of shiny and the other side is flat. And I decided that for my purposes, I'll use the flat side. This came off of a thrifted sign. And then I have some Jenga blocks. Also some paint stir sticks. Plus I have this wood tint. It is a gray color and this is a home decor, um, kind of a stain and it came from uh, plaid. So I'm gonna protect my surface. I'm just using my cutting mat here and an old brush, a little chippy brush. 
and I'm just going to start laying on this stain. It's a stain, not a paint, but it doesn't have a funky smell. Um, yeah, I'm real sensitive to that kind of thing. It didn't make me cough. It didn't make me wheeze. It was great. I'm going over the bar here. All of the little beads, which are so easy to paint because they're on that string. Just like that. And then after a little while, I went ahead and wiped this off. And the longer you leave it, the darker it's going to be. And you can layer it to make it even darker. When it dries, it is darker. But just to show you a difference, you can see the gray in there. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it looks really good. I'm going to do the same over here with drying those beads really well. And then look how easy the cleanup is. So easy. That's a dry paper towel. And then all you have to do is use a, a damp towel and wipe it up. I'm going to start cutting this box. You can use a cutter, but I thought my scissors might work a little better. And I felt a little more comfortable and confident that I wouldn't cut myself doing it this way. You're just going to go ahead and be sure you don't cut too close in on the picture that you're going to use. So the side you're using, rather. Go ahead and use your, your trimmer or your whatever you want to use to cut. And try to get that edge as straight as you possibly can. Don't worry um, if you didn't get your lines exactly straight because stuff's going to be covered. You see this is paper on top of this cardboard. It's going to peel away a little bit, or it did on me anyway. You can use a glue stick and just press that right back down. You'll never even know. Just press it down. You can use a tool to push it down. It'll be great. I had a little tear here when I was cutting. Totally fixed that too. I'm going to take some jute to just kind of trim out that side. You can see it's kind of raggedy looking. I'm going to carefully, carefully, and very slowly, put a line of glue down this side and then just let it overlap on the ends so I don't get it too short and go all the way down. I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. I'm going to go all the way down on both sides the same way to secure it. And then now we're going to take our paint sticks, which are dry now. We're going to mark where we want them to be cut. And then I'm going to easily score this with that same blade that I used to trim up everything else. I'm just scoring that wood, making some little tracks in there, and then do it on the edges too, flip it over on the back, do it on the other edge, same thing. And then you can snap it in half, just like that, perfect. Take a little bit of sanded paper and you just start rubbing that down and kind of, I kind of rocked it back and forth so I would have a little bit of a curve on the edges like it is on the other end. And there they are finished. So this is going to be the top and the bottom. A little bit of hot glue. We're going to put the bottom on and I'm just trying to center it and get it as far down as I can so we can really see the sign without covering too much up. And I think that gray looks really good with the background. What do you think? We're going to do the same thing with the top. And then go across here. Very hot glue. Love my glue gun. Okay, so you're just going to press that down and know my fingers are not touching the glue. And then you're going to let it dry because it'll stick on everything if you don't. And then here it is when it is finished. Here is a recap of the things we've done. Now, some of these things are in other videos. If you're interested and you want to know, um, be sure you check out links that are in the description box. You can see here our truck, our little hanging sign. Here's our tag sign. So pretty. I love that fabric. I can't believe I got that at the Dollar Tree, y'all. The Dollar Tree. And then look how great the wreath turned out. So pretty. And then we'll have our ornament sign in there too. I want to say again, thank you, thank you to all of my subscribers. A huge welcome to everybody who is new and is just coming over to my channel. I appreciate you so much. I'm always glad to see the comments. I'm always grateful for shares and likes and all the love that you give me. I'm going to try to share that with you as well. These ideas walking through, I think it was Bath and Body Works. So you can see all the supplies we're going to be using. I've got some picks. These are little salt and pepper shakers. 
little deer. I have a little stuffed snowman with the little fur. And these jars came from Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? These canisters, they're really, really good. Hopefully you can find these at your store. There's a larger one and a smaller one. And in just a second, I'm going to measure these for you. Just to give you an idea, in case you don't find these, you can get a container that's close to that. I started off by looking for the little fish bowls, but I couldn't find them, so this is even better. Then I have some of this little miniature greenery stuff and some snow and a glass plate. And that also came from Dollar Tree. My kids are stomping around upstairs. As soon as I say I'm doing a voiceover, everybody get quiet. Everybody runs for the hills. Okay, so I'm going to use this satin nickel spray paint and do the plate and both of these tops. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to take this sheet of styrofoam and it's about the same depth as the neck of my jar, so it's perfect. And I got that from the thrift store. I'm just going to press down. I don't want to have to guess here. I want it to be a nice snug fit because I don't want to have to glue this in. And I'm just going to press down with both until I get to my tabletop. And I started off by using my metal ruler here just to kind of score it, cut some little lines in here so it would be easier to work with the pieces one at a time. Works really well for cutting things. And then I started by taking my ruler and just kind of cutting down in there and then decided just to go up and down all around to get my circular shape. This is really easy to do. You can use whatever you want to use, but I had already cut my thumb. I did not want to have to get out a blade or anything else like that. Okay, so once it is popped out of its form there, you're just going to rub off the little edges. They'll be kind of fraying. And then we're going to cover those with a sheet of this faux, this like a snow fabric or a batting material. But I got it a long time ago to use for my little snow village, my little winter village. So this is going to stick pretty well without any glue, so you really wouldn't have to use it. But just for security reasons, I went ahead and opened mine back up, sprayed a little bit, and then glue, put them back down in the same shape. Now be sure that you have windows open, doors open, a fan going, or that you do this outside in a well-ventilated space. Now I'm going to put some on the top of these as well and take some of that snow. You can get it like a white, which is what I have. Or if you prefer, you can get it in like an iridescent. And that's really nice too. I didn't use my salt and snowflake mixture this time because I didn't want to have to deal with the, the mess of it. Plus, I don't have to have this in any type of a thickness. So this works best. All right, I'm just sorting through to see what I want to use. And I do have this pick that came off of something, I think, from last year. And then so I've just cut it down and stuck it in the back and I know that I want my little deer to go right there. So I'm going to hot glue him on the bottom. It doesn't have shiny surface on the edges so that's where you want to put your glue. And it will stick down without coming off. That's my experience anyway. And then another little pine pick I'm putting over here because I want it to look like he is in the woods. Deer like to bed down and and be in a secure hidden spot so I'm trying to kind of make him feel comfortable right there in his little home. So these little picks are really nice. I think when we grew up we called the tree a popcorn tree because the little seed pod would pop open like popcorn pops. So I think that's what these little white pieces are. That's what it reminds me of anyway. But they also kind of put you in the mind of a flower and they're snowy. So I just I love the texture and the interest that it gives to this piece. I'm going to take some of my little snowy pine cones and just put them here and there, just like if you were doing an arrangement, you know, like a floral arrangement. Just put them in there and protect your fingers. You can definitely use your little silicone finger protectors for that. Um, I do have an Amazon storefront, so if there's anything in my video that you need to learn about or know about, you can look it up on my Amazon store and it is in my description box. So far, so good. I'm liking my little deer. Don't be concerned with the little holes in his head because we are going to fix that. It's not going to be a problem. I'm going to do something really cool with that. 
and then you're just going to continue to put them around. I, I pick it up and put it down and, and look to see what I need to go where. And just like when we're doing wreaths and arrangements, pick it up, look at it from all angles and decide what needs to go where. I do that quite a lot. Isn't he cute? If you want to buy me a coffee, do you know that you can certainly do that? The link's in the description box below. Thank you. All right, just add them in here and there. Make sure that you do not go past the edges of your little cap because you're going to have to squeeze the little surface here back into the jar. So you don't want to extend past your edges. Leave everything in the center on the top. Okay, so this these little berries came off of the little garland, the little pitberry garland, whatever. And you can pull them off the wire and cut them. And I decided to use these to make him look like a little buck. When, when uh, deer or babies, when they get older, obviously, they start to grow little nubs on their head before they become horns. So now we have a little nub and buck. Isn't he cute? So I'm going to take a piece of this wire that I already had. Um, it came off of a floral pick that I used before. And I'm going to take the skinny wire part and just poke it right into the fabric. We have to have a way to secure this snowman and make sure he doesn't pop off of our little base when we put him together. So I'm just doing the same thing on both sides, putting the wire side down first, trim it down so he's got some little stilts, and then press it straight through the fabric. It's really easy to puncture through that fabric, by the way. No worries about that. Okay, so he's down, and now we need to add some hot glue underneath. And while I have him, because his bottom is so uh, thick and so um, round, I have to put quite a bit of glue and then hold him down there till he's completely dry. Again, with the Pitberry Garland, I'm going to make a little circle with a couple of loops, and we're going to put, put it down over his arms, making sure again that it stays on that base and does not go off of the base. And I'm going to put that down at his feet and then we're going to make almost like a little wreath circle to go around him. So I'm just going to lay these pine cones one at a time all in the same direction all the way around. Just like this. So you can see the little pit berries sticking out underneath. I like them. They look snowy to me. It looks perfect. Just going to go around and around here. Stay tuned, because later on we have information about the 8,000 subscriber giveaway. It's coming up. You don't want to miss it. Okay, so we're going to continue around just like this until the circle is complete. You can use anything you want to use here. You can use little iridescent pom-poms to look like snowballs or just anything you want. And so that part is finished. I like it. And I'm going to add two of these little trees. And these are just little white trees that you can get at Dollar Tree or at Target, um, Bullseye's Playground, whatever. And you can just cut them because they're on wire. So you can make, make them smaller if you would like. And I've used a larger one and a smaller one. And then I'm going to twist around just a little dowel rod that I have here to make a little twisty, like snowy branch. I'm going to add some hot glue and tuck that right inside behind the tree and it's going to stand up right by his little hands or his little arms. Cute. They almost look like a little heart, don't they, on the top. And again, just kind of looking all the way around to see what else I want to add. I'm going to add one more right to the front, right behind the trees and on top of the pine cones. And he is just too precious. It might be a she, who knows? She's like in her fur coat and her little fur wrap there. Now I'm gonna disassemble this cause I need two wood discs. So I'm just gonna take this apart. And then I'm gonna spray paint them with the same paint. Be sure to follow me on my social media. Okay, so now we have to assemble everything with our snow globes. And I'm just trying to get an idea of what pieces I want to go where. And I know that I want the top to actually be the bottom now. So I'm gonna start by taking my small jar and the deer who is smaller, and I'm just going to press it up into the neck or the mouth of that jar. Press it, press it, press it. And I do have one of my branch tips a little bit bent over, but I, 
am not bothered by that one little bit. Everything doesn't grow straight in nature, so who knows how it would have gone if it would have just been plunked down by the wind. So there you go. Very cute. Now we need to cover the top. We don't want that to show. And it's got a dimple in it like the bottle, bottom of a jar normally has. And it's kind of ugly. We're going to need to cover that up. Plus, if it's going to be a candle holder, we need a flat surface to put there. So we're going to go around with a little bit of fix-all glue and the hot glue in between. you got to work really quick after you put the hot glue on because it dries fast on glass and on metal. And there you go. This is going to be our top and our bottom. And I think it looks great. Now we're going to take some of this trim. It's kind of fuzzy, sparkly little rope trim. And then I'm going to cut a piece of greenery down. It's just cutting off little pieces so I have something to grab onto with the rope. Just trimming it. Now I have a little stem to attach it. And I can put it right underneath that knot. Put a little bit of hot glue there to make sure nothing comes off. And then I can just tie it in there. I don't want anything to fall apart. Y'all, I swear I don't have ghosts in my house. What you hear above is my kids. Okay, so there we go. I'm tying this down. Very simple. You could hot glue it if you wanted to. And you could certainly use a different type. You could use jute or anything you want on the top. But I thought this would be appropriate for Winter Wonderland because it's sparkly. So now we have one piece of our pick. I'm going to add another one of these little pods, and I'm going to add another little pine cone. Just like that. Isn't he adorable? I love it. Alright, now it's time for the snowman. We're going to put him in carefully, making sure you get his arms in there, because the mouth of the jar is the smallest diameter. So I'm just tucking as we go along. He fit in nicely. Got plenty of room there. Always check before to make sure that your items are going to fit. So just, you know, check it out first. Now I'm just going to press it in. Screw that lid down nicely. And when you flip it back over, this is how this one looks. You can put extra snow in if you want to, but I did not need it for mine. I like it like this, and the one at Bath & Body Works did not have loose snow in it either. Alright, so I'm taking that plate. It is upside down. And I am placing the bottom of the jar, which is now the top, right on top. Give it time to dry. So I'm trying to support that, that plate on there to make sure nothing happens. And I'm going to add a wooden disc on the bottom of this one. Well, it will be the bottom now. Just to make sure that both of my items looked, you know, like a pair. I'm going to take the rest of that little piece of rope and go around right in the center right around where the little crack is between those and a little bit of glue here and there just to make sure it doesn't move and instead of tying this off I'm just gonna make it just loop around and that's all I've got some really pretty this is like a metallic looking almost like a ladder that I'm gonna add right underneath the plate at the top of this jar because I want to add something else and I need something to adhere the two things together to hold it make it a little more stable so when you glue to glass it can be difficult things like to pop off so I'm gonna go all the way around with a little bit of glue so that I don't make a mess glue a little bit onto the plate a little bit onto the jar or the canister and just keep going around just like that now it's gonna cut off in a minute but don't be concerned because I promise you at the end of the video you're going to see the full effect, you'll be able to see it for what it is in the end. Okay, so I'm going to continue around, and this is how it looks, and you could certainly leave it this way, but I got these icicle garlands at the thrift store, and I thought, you know what, what a perfect place to put these. So now, the hot glue on the ribbon will hold these little plastic icicles nicely in place. And you can certainly use Gorilla Glue or whatever type of adhesive that you like. Be sure you subscribe if you're enjoying this video. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family and my journey to 10,000 subscribers. We're going to start off with this wagon wheel wreath, which was originally from Dollar General several years ago. And I took all the picks off so I could use it again. 
I've got new picks and I've got these little metal trees um, <laughs> houses rather from Dollar Tree and they come in three different colors so you can use whatever you like but I like the the metal for this wreath cut your picks apart because we're gonna make new picks got two little picks that came from Dollar Tree with a couple little things on it and I'm gonna beef them up so I'm gonna add some white eucalyptus to it and I'm gonna add another greenery pick with some frost on it and I'm just gonna use these pipe cleaners to hold them together you can use floral wire you can use floral tape zip ties whatever you want to use I'm gonna make several of them that are somewhat similar and then I think I made two of those and then I'm gonna make a few more that are a little bit different and you'll see those as well okay see those and then we're gonna wrap these together a little bit different but it's all in the same theme everything is gonna match nicely together you can bend them out they are mostly on wire so just bend them make them look how you want nothing needs to lay flat and then start placing them around where you think you might want them I always do this first I don't always leave it in the video but I always lay them down first to decide what is most pleasing to my eye and you know it's going to be different for everybody you know everybody's going to like something different and that is fine your crafts and creations are yours they bring you joy no one can tell you that it's not right you don't need approval that's what I'm saying be confident do it with joy in your heart and be confident okay so I'm just using zip ties here but you can use you've seen me use floral wire to do this too you could certainly use hot glue if you wanted because this is just like a MDF wheel whichever way you want to do it will work fine I'm just kind of overlapping them where you can't see the stems from the previous one you want it to be nice and full then move your picks around where they look nice and then so you can we're alternating so I had one of the thinner picks then one of the thicker ones with the pine cones then a thinner one then we're gonna do the thicker pick with a pine cone in it just like that So my goal, in case you were wondering, is to be at 10,000 subscribers before I get to 2022. So I am well on my way, but I still need a little over 50 subscribers a day in order to get that goal. And that's just an average. So I am asking that if you enjoy my videos, if you're already a viewer, I would love for you to subscribe and join this family. There's my son's hands. He's all into it too. He's putting the winter ma magic in here. He didn't want me to cut it out of the video either. But I would love to have you. I really would love to have you. We have so much fun. I'm always in the comment section responding, you know, answering questions and just talking. I love to talk to y'all. I love to get your input. And so many people leave tips, which is great because it helps us all. So be sure you read the comment section, you know, if you're a subscriber or if you're a viewer who is considering subscribing. Okay, so now it's time to put the pieces down and I'm gonna do it just like this you can put your houses on here any way you want to but I'm trying to get mine centered in an area where the back is open so that I can put my little flickering flameless candles inside so I'm trying to leave a space in there where I can get those pieces back on the inside so just like this I'm gluing it down and don't worry if you make a mess you know just put something underneath your surface because sometimes you know you put glue where it doesn't need to be and it's dripping on the table it's okay it's just crafting it's supposed to get a little messy right so press them on down there and then add in your pieces of greenery in the additional spots that you want them you're not going to see the end of this clip either because for some reason it disappeared on me but uh, definitely, definitely stay tuned to the end because you will see what it looks like all together. I'm just adding in some more greenery and then I'm gonna add some of those little Christmas trees just like this around the houses. But look at this. Aren't they cute? See the little flickering lights on the inside? 
I love this piece. And I'm so glad I didn't lose the footage of the full wreath. So here is this candle, our little snow globe with the candle on top. Definitely use flameless candles. So I'm going to start off with the first project. It is going to be some framed, a framed bag. We're going to use some wood tint, some paper towels, a chip brush, or whatever type of brush you like to use with your stains or tints. I'm going to use a thrifted 12 by 12 frame. Just gonna pop the back out. It doesn't have any glass in it. This is a Michaels bag. And I'm gonna be cutting Santa out. He's so cute. I love this vintage look for this little Santa, his little sweet face. Now I'm gonna try to cut off as much as that green as I can. So I'm gonna try to get as close to the red as possible because I don't wanna have any of that left on there. And this is how it looks. Okay, so you can see the difference. If you put a white paper behind it, you see how much whiter that looks? And then, see there? So I want it, I want it to have a white backing instead of having it against cardboard because that'll make it look more dull. I'm going to use my glue stick. You can use any type that you like, any brand, and just go over this entire bag. The bag is like a fabric mesh on the back. It's kind of a strange texture. So once I get it down, I'm going to take my little tool that came from plaid and I'm going to press this all down. Just going to see where the bottom is, flip it over and cut that off. And then I'm going to fussy cut around Santa one more time to get a nice clean edge so that we have none of that white showing. Its only purpose is to brighten up the background. Now from Dollar Tree you can get some of these pieces of wallpaper, wallpaper panel, whatever they call it. I'm going to put my backing back there again so I can get an idea of how much I want to use. And just using some clips, I'm holding it in place while I cut off the excess on the bottom. It doesn't have to be the exact size of the backing because Santa is going to be covering that up. Now on these pages, you fold it over and peel the back off. Just that first strip is how I start. Then I try to get my strip right on top of the surface and press it down carefully so that I know that I don't have any crooked lines. Just making sure there's no bubbles. And then you're gonna peel a little bit up from the back, flip it back over. And then I like to use a wooden ruler because it won't cut your, your wallpaper there and just Kind of shimmy it back and forth, back and forth, all along that as you slowly peel the back end off and lay the adhesive side down. And it's going to give you a nice smooth finish. Just like that. And then we're going to put Santa right on top of it. I like that Santa has the little wood paneled background. I think that looks really cute. I'm going to use some of my Mod Podge. Thank you, Plaid, for sending me so many goodies. I am an ambassador, so I get to try out all kinds of items from them. I'm going to use my brush and go all the way to the edges and neatly in pretty much one layer. Cover it all up, and then we're going to lay it down, line it up, and press it down. I'm going to hold on to it so it won't slide anywhere. And then just work the bubbles out. And if you have any spots that aren't stuck all the way down, just go back in there, like his mustache and the edge of his coat, and just lay that down. So far, so good. We're going to put Santa aside and let him dry. I'm going to pull the tabs out of the back, and we're going to work on the frame. This is just raw wood, and I'm going to use some of this gray tint, again, from Plaid. It's a folk art product. I love these. These do not smell like stain. They dry very fast. They're like a water base and uh, fairly easy to clean up. Now the darker colors will, will stain, so you have to be careful and protect your surface, which is what I have done here. And then you're just going to go all the way around. Be sure you get the inside of the frame and all those surfaces. And you're going to grab up a wad of paper towels or an old rag and just start rubbing off every bit of the excess on the inside, on the sides and on the flat surfaces. So after it's dried and Santa is dry, I'm gonna put him back down in the frame. I'm gonna use some of this tacky glue 
and just go here and there in like a dotted line and then I'm going to go in in between those lines with some lines of hot glue so it'll stick down quickly and then it'll stick down for longer just like that you can just use hot glue if you want to here however you want to do it then I'm just going to use some lightweight wood blocks here just to hold it down to make sure that nothing comes up I'm going to give it some time to dry and then once it's all dry this is how Santa in the frame looks now it's time to embellish so I made this string of beads on a Valentine's product um, project last year in 2020 and I took it off and I'm using it again this year in the Christmas and I like it this is a little thrifted bobble it's like a ornament of some type and it has a hole in the top I'm gonna take a little white piece of pipe cleaner loop it around my little beaded piece up there add some hot glue into the hole and then I'm just going to place those two pieces of pipe cleaner right down in there and it fits perfectly and to embellish that we're going to use just a little piece of pick that came off of something else I'm going to cut it into two little pieces and make sort of a garland for the top of it I'm going to put it right there on that loop and then give it a minute to dry and I think I want to add a little bow to it so I'm just using some of this gingham red and white uh, thrifted ribbon that I have and I'm gonna pull this down to make it really tiny then I'm gonna trim little edges at a slant and put it right there over my greenery so I wanted to add one more thing on here and I had a snowflake left from my light up snowflake swag which you definitely need to watch that if you haven't seen it yet and I'm just gonna add it right there and I think it gives a perfect little finish what do you think about this project isn't he sweet I think it's perfectly vintage and rustic then you can just put whatever type of hanger on the back you want moving on to the next project we're gonna work on this beautiful yardstick swag I won't be using a yardstick though you'll see what I use so I'm going to use some long deco mesh, some shorter deco mesh. I'm going to use white and red. I'm going to be using, I don't use that silver that's to the side. I've got some bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. I've got some Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and thrifted ribbon. I've got some of these little ornaments that all came from Goodwill. Aren't they sweet? And then this one. And here's a Santa that I got at the thrift store, but you can get them similar. I think he has glasses at Dollar Tree. And then here's the little pick. This is a stake that came off of some type of a yard stake that I had. It is about 24 inches long, 20, 24 inches, something like that. And we're gonna use some pipe cleaners. And this is how we're gonna attach our deco mesh to the stick. So you're just gonna wrap one around the top. It's about an inch down, tightly and then a little dot of hot glue so it doesn't slip on you then we're gonna go down four or five inches depending on what you want to do and we're going to wrap one to each side so wrap it in the middle and press one off to the side and we're gonna do the same thing right over the top or right under or above it and go right to the side we're gonna go down the same amount of distance one in the middle a little bit of glue to hold these down if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you certainly can to show me some love. The link is in the description box below. We're gonna continue all the way down just like this until we get to the bottom. And on the bottom, we're gonna do two pieces and then you'll be a little space there. Be sure that you get your hot glue on the bottom one for certain or it will fall off when you try to make your loop on the end. And you'll see what I mean when I start adding on my deco mesh. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna take all the little hangers off of my ornaments also. Should have mentioned that earlier, but there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this very wide deco mesh. I think it's a 20 inch. I'm just gonna kind of gather it into my hand. This is a scrap that I got from the thrift store and it is, um, I knew that it wouldn't be enough to do too much with, but it's perfect for these swags. 
good for scraps. I'm just going to place it down and wrap it around just like that. I'm going to go down, make a little poof, kind of tucking my edges under. See the little poof there? We're going to take a little ruler until you can learn how to eyeball this. And we're going to do 10 inch poofs. So there we go. It's going to go to the outside. Just going to push it down into the center and then twist it. You can use your finger or your knuckles or whatever to hold it in place. Because deco mesh can kind of be frustrating and unruly, especially when you use the big spools like this. It gets kind of crazy and it catches on all of the pipe cleaners and drags across your table. It's just potentially a big mess. Going down another 10 inches and we're going to go back to the center. Poof it up. Put it in the center. Okay. We're going to go to the side again. We're going to work all on one side and then after we go to the bottom, We'll loop back up and start on the other side. So there we are in the middle. And then back to the outside. All right. The bottom, same thing, 10 inch poof, but you're just gonna loop it around and put it right in the one on the other side. 10 inch poof to the center. It's gonna overlap the other one you have there. Give lots of volume. 10 inch loop on the side. Make another one. There we go, all the way around until you get back where you started from. I'm just kind of adjusting here. I tucked my tail up too much. It gets really wound tightly when it gets next to the spool. So I'm just showing you how I pull that out. Kind of fluff it around and make sure that it's tucked in. And then wrap it around right there. Okay, so now we're gonna add the red, and this is our Dollar Tree mesh. I think it's eight inches, maybe eight inches. All right, gonna tuck that inside toward the middle, just like we did with the white one, so that it's not sticking up on the outside. It'll all be hidden under the little poofs. And we're gonna do the same process here. We're gonna take about 10 inches. We're gonna start on the side, whichever side you want. This time I'm starting on the right. Before I did the left, it makes no difference one way or the other. Make your poof. Find your center point, which is what I'm doing now, and it gets difficult once it starts getting kind of um, fluffy here. It, it gets kind of uh, challenging, but you just keep going. You can find them. If, you, if it would help you to use a different color like the red and white pipe cleaner so that you can find it easily, go ahead and do it that way. Whatever works for you because you won't see those pipe cleaners in the end. So I'm going to keep going around. Same process. Go to the side, go over to the center, go back to the side, go over to the center until you are at the bottom, wherein you will make a loop just like we did before. I didn't want to edit this all out because I feel like some people need a little more visual. So that's what I'm giving you here. So we're looping it across the bottom just like we did before and going into the other side. Just like that. Continue along. And it makes a beautiful, slightly crisscross pattern. Um, it's not as noticeable once you get all of your little elements onto here, but I think it's a pretty look. We're back at the top, and it took almost one whole roll of the Dollar Tree Dicka Mesh. You can change your mesh colors depending on what you have, depending on what kind of decorations you want to put on it. But I really like the idea of using that bluish green color and red and white for my vintage uh, projects. And I'm just fluffing it out, moving that around where I want it. Now we're going to take this beautiful ribbon, which was the inspiration for the projects and the coloring, and we're going to do 10 inch pieces. We're going to do nine of the Santas and dovetail them. We're going to do nine of the Dollar Tree ribbon and dovetail them. And then I have a red one that I got too from the thrift store and dovetail those. We're going to, last minute, I decided to use this because I hadn't used it yet. I'm cutting these into 10 inch pieces and rolling them up. You can see the little pink clip. That's where I just rolled it up like a little burrito and clamped it off over there. And they'll go on top of our little bundles. 
So let's start our ribbon bundles now. I'm going to use my widest on the bottom, then the next one, and then right over the top I'm going to use my beautiful Santa ribbon. I'm going to take one of these little rolls and put it right in the center, and then I'm going to bunch these toward the center. I'm going to pinch them and press them toward the center. And there we have our ribbon bundle. I'm starting in the top, I'm going right up here to those pipe cleaners and wrap it around. Very pretty. Now, I use 10 inch pieces. You are certainly welcome to use 12 inch pieces of ribbon strips if you would like. They will stand out more because these, um, because they're 10 inches, they will kind of fall down into the, the arrangement itself. They'll kind of be pushed in. You can still definitely see them. You'll see that in the end. Um, you can definitely see them, but if you like more of your ribbon to show, do a couple of more inches on each little strip and you'll get a bigger punch of your ribbons. So you can see here, I'm pressing it down. And don't worry about smashing your loops and all of that because every bit of this is wired ribbon and it can be pulled right back up. And deco mesh is very forgiving. You can push that around and tuck it under. You, you really have a lot of um, leeway with that. Back to the center, you can see here, we're gonna cross them over, add that little roll straight onto the top. I couldn't think of a thing in the world to make with that little snowy looking red stuff. Have y'all used it? Have you used any of that? I think it looks great in a ribbon bundle like this, but I really don't know what else I would use it for. So I did use um, all of it in this project. So that's good. I didn't waste any money and that always makes me feel better at the end of a project. So we're going to continue along until they're all done and then this is what it will look like when you get all of your bundles in. And then you just want to be sure that you go up and fluff all of those out. Make sure that none of your corners are folded over or squished. You want a good representation of each color. Follow me on my social media. Love to see you there. So that's what I'm doing here, just moving them all out, moving my little rolls around, and then tuck down all of your little pipe cleaners. Press them back down into the frame like I'm doing here, or you can cut them off, whichever one you prefer to do. I found it's easier just to leave them there and tuck them in the back in case I want to go back, you know, as an afterthought and add something to it. I still have it there. Those look so nice and the colors are so pretty together and there you go you just flip things out press them under pretty easy to do okay so I have widened up the view a bit so you can see it a little bit better and we're gonna start by adding our little ornaments I'm gonna put Santa at the top and off to the side I'm gonna add my little trees in here I do pull the bottoms off of those trees before I glue them down. I've cut a little hole in the back of Santa's hat behind the seam and put a pipe cleaner through it so that I can attach him to this piece. I'm gonna put some hot glue on the little trees and just tuck those in here and there. You can use whatever type of ornaments you have, but I tried to find things that were vintage looking so that they would fit into the total aesthetic of this piece and these are a little faded in spots they're scratched in spots um, they are glass and I just I thought they were pretty I love the shape of them in this arrangement what do you think it's not your typical round ornaments so I like that they're different and they almost look like the little bulbs for the Christmas lights which is nice also a vintage thing, the little shapes of the lights like that. So I'm just poking them here and there. I didn't have very many of them, and I'm just trying to make sure that I have them kind of spaced out there where they should be, where you can see them well. I'm going to add my little boots in here. Just a little bit on the bottom, a little on the side. I do all of my wreaths and my swags laying down. A lot of people use a stand to hold them up. I just don't have one at this point, and that's why I don't do mine standing up. But, but when I do find one, because I'm going to get it thrifted, 
uh, of course. If I find one, then I'll start doing my videos for you where you can see me put them on standing up. That may be more helpful. Now, this beautiful ribbon, this is the only piece I had. I got it at the thrift store. Uh, loved it. So, I decided I'm going to cut it in half to really stretch it. So, I'm just going to roll it over in four inch pieces, like a four inch flip flop over there. And then I'm going to have two pieces on each side. And I'm going to pinch it in the middle. This is not going to be the kind of bow that requires a lot of wire to hold it. It's going to be fine with one piece of wire down one side. And you'll see that when I get to the, uh, the end of the bow. It looks just fine. It works just fine. And if it wouldn't have worked when I tried to fluff it out, I would have just gone back and tried something else. Because I didn't use any glue on the bow, I could do that. I'm going to do this with the red and unfortunately my Santa did not have very much so I had to work with just a tiny piece and I had to use a different bow on the top. The next time I'll buy two rolls when I find a ribbon I really like. So this is all I had so I'm just going to make a different type of bow just so I can use it in this project because I really really enjoy looking at this ribbon. It's so cheery and bright and vintage. So I'm adding that on top and you can mix your bows too. I'm going to cut off what we don't need and um, start fluffing. And I'll start fluffing on the bottom and pull those sections out just on the bottom first and then I work my way upward. So that's enough. You know, that will stand out there on its own with just the two pieces of wire and, and I'm glad of that. It worked out. You never know. Crafting is experiment, partly. You just don't always know. I'm going to dovetail the ends off the Santa ribbon there. And you can make a bigger bow. If you have more ribbon, you can make a bigger bow to go on your swag, whatever you choose to do. But I like this one. I think it's cute. Now we're going to use the other half of that ribbon as a tail. So we're going to dovetail it, and I'm going to cut a piece of that red also. It's going to be shorter, and I'm going to dovetail that. Pipe cleaner in the middle is going to hold it together. And then I'm going to add some glue on the back of the bow. And I want to leave my pipe cleaners out because that's how we're going to put it on the, the wreath. I'm going to work down into a spot where I want it to be, and then add that bow. Then I'm going to take the tails and kind of... Pull them over like they have a, just kind of giving them a little life, a little movement. Um, like they're going in and out of the fabric that's here. And I like that. I think that's cute. Gives a little interest. You could do that with your bow tails. Fix it however you like. Santa's beard is totally unruly. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of let the red ribbon do its thing over there. And then we're going to add this little mouse right to the top. Little sweet mouse. Okay, so now we're going to do a vintage wreath. Now, it's vintage inspired because I've never seen a wreath like this before. I'm going to use two embroidery hoops here. And a napkin that came from the thrift store, obviously. With beautiful poinsettias. We're using a 12 inch and an 8 inch for this project. We're also going to use some greenery that you haven't seen yet. So I'm going to lay it on top of here so I can get plenty of that pattern. I'm just trying to get it centered. And then I'm going to press the top on, screw it down. And when you flip it over, you can pull it a little bit to make sure that it's good and flat. It's very forgiving. And then I'm going to leave, leave about an inch so that I can fold and tuck on the inside and give it a nice clean edge. So I'm just leaving it like this, cutting all the way around in about a one inch border. I'm going to protect all of my fingers that may be touching this, and I'm going to put glue around the inside and fold it and tuck it, just like that. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm adding a line of glue and then folding over with my fingers and pressing this down into that glue line. I don't want to get any glue on the back of the napkin itself. I just don't want to have globs and stuff showing through. I'm just trying to keep it neat. And so you want to do this all the way around. 
If you have not subscribed to my channel already, I would love, love, love to have you here. I have a lot of fun. We always communicate in the comments section. And I am doing a countdown to 10,000 subscribers over on my Instagram. So be sure you follow me there. Okay, so you saw how we did that. Now I'm going to find how I want to place it. And then I'm going to add some hot glue to place it down. I'm kind of smearing that glue around so it will get a lot of coverage there. Then I'm going to flip it over. And to give it a little more support, I'm going to take one of these coffee stir sticks that I have in a big pack. And I think, I, I think you know where I got it from. Goodwill. Anyway, we're going to add some glue and we're going to put the pick on the back. Sometimes I say thrift store and Goodwill so much that I almost forget when I'm going to say where something came from. I almost forget where it came from. It's weird. Mine does strange things. So here are some old picks that I got you know where from. I'm going to be cutting into sections. It looks like it originally came from Joann's, but the tag looks pretty old. Beautiful. It's just lightly frosted on the ends. Um, just the way it would be in nature. Frosted on the ends that would be up toward the sky and then the layers underneath do not have as much on them. They're more green. And I love that look. I think it's very pretty. So this is given a little twist on vintage with adding some rustic to it. I'm going to use just my little wire on the paddle here and just twist these pieces overlapping them so that the, the uh, greenery is on top of the one that is right before it. And then you can go back and add more pieces of wire where you need to. You can add a little hot glue where you need to, just to make sure that your pieces stay down. I'm going to tuck in a few extra pieces here and there where I feel like it needs it. So there's one piece. And then there are a couple other spots that look like they could use a little extra help. I don't want any wire or any pieces to show underneath there. Now this one I'm just going to cross over so it's pointing in the opposite direction. I have a piece of mistletoe and I am going to pull this off of its little plastic piece and add it here and there. There's mistletoe in that pretty little napkin. There's also holly, but can you believe with all that I have thrifted, I have never thrifted a piece of holly. No holly and no holly berries and I definitely need to get some. But you know, it's almost clearance time. We'll be getting all this stuff after the holidays. So to make my bow, I'm gonna use the rest of that napkin and cut it into strips right over where the decorative pieces are. And then I'm gonna make a little messy bow. So you just make an X for a messy bow. I'm just trying to decide what I want to go where. Crisscross them just like that and I have a little piece of metallic cording, but you can use anything you want for this jute or a piece of wire Whatever you want. I'm gonna tie it tightly Then I'm gonna pinch it in the middle kind of like you would with a tassel to make sure that both sides are equal I'm gonna trim it off You don't have to be precise with this It's a messy bow for a reason. I want it to be messy. I want little pieces of thread coming off I like it. I think it's pretty. Again, it makes it a little more rustic, which makes it fit better into my own home decor. So there we go. And I'm going to put it right on top of this, right where that little screw is. And then you can add hot glue if you want to, or you can just cut it off like this. And if you cut the little pieces of ribbon short enough, they'll kind of, you know, stay where they need to stay because they're fairly light. Then you make any type of hanger that you want to put on the back and glue it down. So these are our projects. Here is our framed Santa. And he is from a bag. So we recycled a Michael's shopping bag for that. And then we have lots of thrifted items and Dollar Tree items right there on our beautiful swag. Love the colors. Love, love the colors. And then over here we have that pretty rustic doubled wreath. 
and I think it looks nice. What do you think of these projects? They're all vintage inspired. Which one would be your favorite? I want to thank all of my subscribers who have been here from the beginning. If you're new here, I am so happy to have you. You should feel welcome. I have really great YouTube family here to welcome you with open arms. I am so glad that you stopped by today, and I will see you again real soon. Bye!